Well, here we go. Lace them the fuck up. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. What's happening? What's happening in Denmark? Good. Good. Hello, everybody out there in the great wide world. Looking forward to today's show, and I hope you are too. You know what I'm saying? Gonna be a good one. Hey, Adam, I see you out there, bro. So let me let me just uh, let me just chop it up a little bit, and, and we'll get you on in a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a really good one. Absolutely, I got a good I got a good feeling about today's show. I hope you do too. Um, what else is going? Everybody okay? Ray Hogan, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Jan Novak, good, good. All right. That said, Mick in, Mick, Mick in Australia. All right, good. You know, all right, so how about, here, I got one for you. Speaking of train yard hard, what's up? What's up? What's going on? What's going on on the train yard, man? Shea yard hard today in Queens. <laughs> Shea yard hard, yeah. Very what's excited for this one. Yeah. This is a guru. I got I got two CMI shows on my calendar. Looking forward to both. Yeah, me too. Me too. What uh, else? Man. What, what, what's, what's, too happening in London? what's happening in London, John? Good to see you. What's happening in Brooklyn, Dominic? <laughs> that said, what are we talking about today? Do we have a we have are we doing I think we should talk about the weekend. Uh, not not the weekend, Monday. Talk about Monday. Talk about Monday. That would be this, right? That would be this. That would be this, right? This, 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 this. This was good. This was this was a great day. This was a fun turnout. You know the uh, these are always great. I mean, I, I these are always a fun day, and uh, it looks like that thing landed from the sky and just missed squashing our friends. Right. The um. But yeah, this this is uh. Obviously, the, the the Drew Stone cinematic walking tour, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, we we covered a lot of ground. We where do we start? By the Winter Garden, we ended up by Seabees, you know. I mean, yeah, we, this is this is it. Yeah, this is uh, we went out on a a, a walking tour, a, a cinematic and music walking tour. Uh, of course, free free uh, to all patrons uh, that support this show, and um, it was great. And, and listen, anybody's welcome. I mean, everybody's welcome, but. You know, had a couple of patrons out. Um, Rochelle, Rochelle came out with us. That's and, right. Uh, Spike Polite, Hags, Ray Hogan. It was great. It, it, it was great. Yeah, it, it, this was a fun one. I mean, we got nice weather, and uh, we literally just walked. Uh, boy, I clocked like eleven miles that day. It was a good day. Yeah, it was. Is that right? It's a long. It's a long. It's a long day. A long walk. It's it's a lot, man. You know? Yeah, but you know, we had some pizza. I mean, we we did it right, you know. We went and yeah. We went here. I'll tell you what this is for those out there. Um, this this is like the kind of the kind of shit we do on the tour. Like this this um wall behind us as part of the of the whole thing, that wall behind us is actually matches up with this and you know it's like the kind of stuff that that wall is this if you've ever seen uh the allman brothers band you know from the fillmore east um that's so it's that kind of thing we a little bit of history music cinema that kind of thing so yeah once again that is this Boom. That is this. Hmm. So yeah, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, it's a lot of fun. I love doing it. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, before this show really took off, it was kind of like a, a little side hustle I had, you know? Well, now it's a nice, nice little bonus for anyone who, you know, who, like you say, the Patreons and, yeah. you know, and, and even, even that day, we just learned something from the previous uh, episode with Hilly's son that we added something to the walking tour, you know? What was that? Which was, you Remember the, uh, the CB's Upstairs Lounge, you know? CB's Upstairs Lounge? Remember, remember, remember that you pointed it out to us. 
it you it, you just learned about it when we did the Hilly Sun. Remember? You talking about the CBG CB's theater? Yeah, that's what it was. The theater. Yeah. Remember that? Like yeah. that? We yeah. added that to the to yeah. the toy. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, the theater. The theater that right. lasted one weekend. Right. Know? Right. Exactly. Actually, there was a lot. There's a lot. There's a, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of requests to bring Dana Crystal back on the show, but you know, <laughs> I don't know if I could deal with that, man. It's it a was lot. a fun one. It was fun. It was definitely. Uh, uh, Francis he, Sawyer says Bill Graham would have been a fantastic guest on the show. Yo, absolutely. Bill Graham's a huge influence on what I do, promoting oh, sure. and, and, and the show. Bill Graham is definitely uh, a, a, an influence. So. There you go. What's up, Stu, in Liverpool, man? Good. Lace them up. So, yeah. So, there you go. Yeah, that was a great – it was a great – it was always fun, you know? And and I know you got stuff going on this weekend, so we don't have a Sunday show, right? Right. We're going out west. We're playing a couple shows out west, Incendiary Device. We're, we're playing Saturday in San Diego and Sunday in San Pedro, a matinee. We're playing with – Channel three. So anybody out on the West Coast, you know, get up, get out, and make it happen. So there, so there is no, there is no Sunday show, and then there is no Wednesday, and there is no Wednesday, Wednesday. So the next show is Sunday, March seventeenth, with Paris Mayhew. So this is this is going to be one of like one wow. of one of three times where it's actually it's a week and a half until the next show. And you know what? I I need the I need a fucking break. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so we're spending we're spending St. Patrick's Day with Paris. That's cool. Yeah, March I need 17th. a break. Man. We've been doing a we've been doing a lot of shows back to back to back to back, and, and like I, I I need to I need to like go out. Do you me do you remember when we started this? We were doing four a week for That's a while. Nuts. That's nuts, man. <laughs> That's fucking nuts that we were doing four a week. We were doing yeah. four a week when when everybody was locked down. Yeah. Hey, Alan. Good to see you, buddy. And. uh Yes, Joe, Joe in Tallahassee. Uh, absolutely. We're going to talk about it with our guest. Uh, looking forward to On the Streets again with CMI and Cinderella Device and so many great bands. Oi from Tallahassee. Absolutely. Oi. Absolutely, man. Looking forward to awesome. seeing you up here. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. And we got to shout out uh, our friend Mike Thorpe from Yorkshire who came out for the tour. So yeah, that was, he was cool. Great. He was great. Absolutely. All right. Let's get, let's well, get this thing rolling. Have a good time in the yard. Hey, wait. Excuse me. Do you have that that uh, splinter and tick kit? Oh, you know what? I do. Actually, I do. Here, look. Splinter and tick remover. Is there a connection between? Uh, I, I I guess like I guess a pair of tweezers is in there to take out a splinter or a tick. Like I would. And he, think yeah, it's got adhesive bandages, antiseptic wipes, yep. closure bags. Magnifying glass, metal tweezers, and a tick ID card so that you can give him a name and tell him to carry his ID with him wherever he goes. Yeah, you don't want to get bit by a fucking tick, man. No. Fuck you up. All right. <laughs> there you go. I'll talk to you All later. Right, then. You got All it. Right. See ya. There you have it. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, one, two, six, hardcore clothing, and Mad Vintage. Mad Vintage buys, sells, and collects band shirts, primarily hardcore. The DIY operation was started and is operated by a hardcore kid who just loves collecting and eventually got into vintage clothing, specifically the realm of vintage band shirts. They are always looking to buy out collections to either keep, sell, or trade. New shirts added daily at www.madvintage.com and posted on Instagram. Hey, dig deep in that closet of crap, reach out to them, make some dough for yourself. Help me help you, Mad Vintage. That said, let's clear the deck. Let's bring our guest on. Let's make sure everything's cool in the chat room. Every day, Don Foos in Cleveland, my man. Who are you, man? Come on, get back to New York, Don. That said, let's clear the deck, what the heck. Let's get it on. Today's guest is a singer-songwriter, Halen, from the land of Lincoln, the prairie state of Illinois. 
He's known for his work with a band that is absolutely on a tear right now and is certainly making a mark these days. I'm talking about conservative military image. Here today to celebrate the release of the new single, Guilty Until Compliant, please welcome a new friend to the show, coming at us from the city that works, Chicago, Illinois, Mr. Adam Voss. Brother. What's up, Drew? How are you, buddy? I'm alive and well in the great city of Chicago, man. Thanks for having me. I know you rep Chicago hard, man. <laughs> That's all I know. Is that right? Yeah. Best city everything in America. Every, every, everything okay? Daughter's okay? Everything pick, Everything's good? A good productive day, my friend. Just hit the gym, mm-hmm. drop the kid, set up, That's- ready to talk shop. <laughs> ready to chop it up. Mm-hmm. Um, so let, let, let's jump. Let's jump right into it. Um, how did you come up? You know, where'd you grow up? Uh, did you grow up in a musical household? How did music come into your life? Oh, absolutely. Um, neither of my parents played music, um, but always listened to it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so my mom was always singing radio songs and buying CDs. Same with my dad. Um, Classic rock was like, you know, my first influence to music when I was like, you know, fourth, fifth grade. Um, but pretty much that's like, it's a musical household, even though there was no one who, who played instruments or, or had any sort of musical background. Um, and then I kind of just like, I mean, I don't know. I just really took to music. I just was buying CDs, you know, whatever, until I was like trying to find what I was looking for essentially, you know, so it was like, the Green Day and Silver Chair and Offspring, you know, were like the early, super early introductions to me. This is like, you know, is, is that is that the first stuff that like came across your radar as as a young person? Yeah, I mean, this is like when MTV still played music videos and had like right. top <laughs> when MTV you know actually I mean? fucking played music videos, right? Yeah, yeah. So we would turn, I would tune into the top twenty like every week. You know, I'd right. be like, so I started finding out about like that, and then. um you know, as I got into middle school um, is when I, like, started getting, like, into punk, essentially. Um, so around seventh grade, for me, I guess that was, like, 97 or 98. Um, did, did, you, did, you grow, did you grow up in Chicago proper? Uh, no. My dad was in the Marine Corps. So we I, used I to move, okay. like, every two or three years. Um, so... You know, we lived in Japan, we lived in Tennessee, um, and then he retired. Um, he did like 21 years. He retired. Wow. Okay. Just so he, he, so he, he was a career military man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Respect. Yeah. He retired just outside Atlanta when I was like in middle school. So mm-hmm. I went to middle school and high school like in the Atlanta area. So some of my, my, my first shows ever were in Atlanta. I see. Yeah, I think, like, we used to drive, you know, 30 minutes to the city or whatever. I think my my very first show ever was the Beer Olympics at Masquerade in Atlanta. I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to bring up the Masquerade. That's a place that, that I know. I, I directed a video for a band called Stuck Mojo at the Masquerade. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I guess that place isn't open anymore or there's some new variant. It was, a, it was a pretty cool place. Yeah, I mean, that's like. Growing up, that was like where all the big shows were. I mean, I, yeah. I was young, dude. I was like 14 or 15, maybe. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I had snuck out. Like, I wasn't even supposed to be there. Um, and that was, that was probably one of my first shows. So, yeah, and then from there, you know, finding the next thing. All my friends in high school were like punks and skinheads and skaters, you know. So, all, it was like before really cool to be like alternative, you know. So, we all just kind of stuck together. And that's like my introduction into like all of pretty much like all of Oi and Skinhead and all of like punk, you know, and street punk, all of that stuff. What, what was it, What was the first um, Oi and street punk stuff that, that uh, really uh, spoke to you? The, I had, a, my buddy gave me a copy of the anti-heroes American pie. There you go. Um, and so that for me, that's like, that was like the coolest thing ever. Like I got that and I had, I, he gave me that CD and he gave me Black Flag first four years and the Minor Threat discography. So like those were the three like, first like punk CDs I had. And I was like, I was all in on it. Um, that, so, that's, yeah, good. That's, that's good. That's good stuff right there. You know, that, that's, that's, so, that's, that's like solid, like solid in the hardcore realm and, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and solid 
you know, in the oil realm. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'm fortunate to be able to like for those CDs to be like some of them, like the first things I ever got my hands on. I'm very fortunate for that. You know what I mean? And yeah. those things have aged so well. I mean, like, dude, I I don't really like Black Flag like with Henry Rollins. I love Henry Rollins, but for me, like Black Flag in my head was just the first four years. Sure. I mean, like that's the stuff. Like even still, I'm like, damn, this still hits. Uh, Pat Baldwin says, anti-heroes put Atlanta back on the map. I would definitely agree with that. So yeah. One of the best things to come out of Atlanta. Also, Terminus City. Mm -hmm. Shouts out. Terminus City. And we used to go to that. There was a store there. Crash and Burn. Mm -hmm. That was like a big, like the, the big punk and skinhead store that sold like all the boots and all the flights. So, you know, whatever music was playing in that store there was also another kind of. Uh, good times. I was, uh, it's really young, man. I wish I could have paid more attention, you know, yeah. during that time. You know, when you're so young, you don't even realize. And then, uh, how old were you when you when when you moved to Chicago? Um, I moved here in 2006, so I was 22, I think. Yeah. Is 22. this is this, is this before you were in the service? Yeah, yeah. I joined. I went. I joined. Or excuse me, uh, I moved to Chicago to go to college. Um, and while I was in college, um, that's where I met my wife. Um, ah. And I was really sick of being like poor. So I'm like the first in my family to graduate high school. You know, I'm like by far the first to go to college. So I was like, you know, there was nothing expected of me at all. It's like you graduate high school, and then I was like, all right, you just go get a job, you know? And so sure. I did move for a couple of years. So I moved here to go to college and self funded, man. I like paid for everything myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I still work full time while going to school full time. Um, and it was fun until it wasn't, and it got it just it's very exhausting. And I was just like, God, I'm so sick of being poor, <laughs> you know, working my butt off, going to school, and then at the same time, you know, in my early 20s, trying to enjoy my life. So all of those things kind of came to a head, and I was like, you know, I want to go do something, you know. And I had all these like opinions about the war and about politics and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna join the army, I want to go to war. <laughs> so, like, that's pretty much like. The catalyst for me to decide to go to the military. So yeah, I joined out of here. Oh and, yeah, and look at that. Yeah, Chase there you go. Uh, the, and uh, and any, uh, did you go into the army because basically because your dad was in the army? Um, I you know I would say like uh, yeah, honestly I think so. I had tried to join the Marines first, but they wouldn't take me. They said I was I was too old because I was uh, twenty four. And I had too many tattoos, and so I was pretty butthurt about that. Um, so yeah, then I went to the, I joined the army instead, and they were like, "Oh, you get to pick your job." So I would say <laughs> that, like, yeah, my dad, like, just keeping the military like uh, tradition in the family alive, probably sure. definitely had something. To do. Was that was that always something like growing up that was sort of always? I'm assuming was was that always something like peripherally that that, that was kind of in your life, like. You know, my like growing up sort of with your dad being a career military guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, growing up in military bases and, you know, everybody lives pretty much in the same house. And, um, you know, you hang out with all these friends who's all dads have the same job pretty much. Um, yeah. right. But I would say, like, dude, if you would have told me that I was going to be in the military, you know, like during high school or even a couple years after, I would have right. told you you're, I would have told you you're crazy. Like, you're insane. So, um, right. It's kind of funny how that works, but you know. And uh, and here you are. You were deployed to Afghanistan, correct? Yeah, yeah. This is this is Afghanistan, uh, Patika province, which is like wow. on the on the border of Pakistan. This was 2011. This is Weapon Squad, baby. Wow. Yeah, that's that's us before a night patrol. Um, so these guys that are all in the photo, this was like my team essentially. Like we did everything together. You know, we slept together, like, in the same bunks. Like, you know, we trained night and day. So I still stay in touch with uh, a couple of these guys as well, too. So Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, uh, do you keep in touch with any of the guys? And Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think maybe, like, out of my platoon, there's still, like, two or three guys who are still in. So, you know, now they're, like, way up there, sergeant first class, first sergeants. I think one of them is a sergeant major, which is oh, wild because, yeah. you know. <laughs> I did five years, so I, wow. I did that to go. So, because I wanted to use my benefits and all that fun stuff. <laughs> uh, 
Were you, you, you know, it, it, it sort of reminds me a little bit. Uh, he, he, here's a shot of, uh, here's a shot of my dad, right? Um, this is, this is my dad in front of his tank. Uh, oh, he was in, yeah. In, in Korea. And, uh, so, you know, my dad, my dad tells a story about how going into the military was almost the, one of the, was the, like almost the, it saved his life. It was one of the best things that ever happened for him. He right. was, he was running, he was running in the streets of the Bronx. He, he was in a Jewish street gang called the Stallions. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and he, uh, going into the military really, really, um, helped him uh primarily here's one one more shot this i like this shot it's my dad my, my dad and and, and and it sort of reminds me of your shot right it's my dad and his boys you know so yeah i've definitely got i've got like the modern day version photos of that absolutely yeah right. so out, I, yeah out, out on the field but you know i yeah. i think just just doing my homework and knowing a bit about the band uh you know, my dad came out of it and, and, and just said he just learned a lot of discipline and, and picked up an incredible work ethic. And, and I feel just I, I, could you give us a little take on that? Because I, I feel like conservative military image. What, what one thing that really impressed impressed upon me is you guys have just a great work ethic. Can you tell us about like how how it's connected? I would absolutely co-sign on what your dad said. Uh, it was the same for me, but maybe not to that extreme. You know, I wasn't like getting in any trouble or anything like that, but I was directionless. I had, you know, like very little discipline, um, you know, and I'm just stagnant and nothing. Um, and like going to the military was the best decision that I ever made. I grew up like really quickly in there. Um, and I'm glad, you know, I joined a little bit late like older, so I was 24 when I went in. Um, but man, like, it's the best decision I ever made. Um, like, helped me grow up, like, showed me what I was, like, capable of doing. I learned, I learned that it has to get done. Like, it has to get done, right? So there's no, there's no option of, like, it's not being done in the military. It's like, this is what has to happen, right? <laughs> so you kind of learn that and, like, really training your brain to, like, show you what you're capable of. When you think that like, oh, I can't go any farther or I'm done or I'm out, it's like, that's, you're only getting started, you know? So I learned, I learned how to kind of like, like um, be very resilient mentally um, and, you know, just, hey, it's gotta get done. You know, we can sit around, we can, you know, cry on each other's shoulders, but that's not gonna help, you know what I mean? So like, the faster we all get together, get this thing done, boom, it's done, we go on. So learning that was awesome, you know. I showed you what I was capable of, like challenged me like every way possible. And I mean, honestly, dude, like I was, I was really good, really good at the military. You know, a lot of it is dog and pony show, what they say, right? Like, yeah. you know, you're wearing the uniform and there's all these dumb things. And, you know, I know what they're looking for, you know, know what they want to hear type stuff, especially when you're a young private. Um, so like I was like surprisingly really good at the military, um, and it, you know I I got to do a lot of cool stuff and great opportunities, and you know I was like it was the first thing I think I did where I was like whoa man like I'm kind of good at this you know and it like fired yeah. me up. I loved absolutely loved. I was in the infantry, so I loved being in the army in the infantry the whole time, but I I also absolutely hated it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. It, I say, I say it's. The, the best worst time of my life, you know what I mean? Because it's like relentless, and you know, especially when you're gearing up for war and you're training, dude. It's just they eat you up. So you know, I definitely got you know got into way more into like physical stuff and like weightlifting and training and diet and sleep. So all of that was kind of a you know a jump off point for like my the last 15 years of my life of like you know being healthy and caring about stuff. Sure. But before you before you went in, were you ever in a band or, or did you consider yourself a musician in any regard or was there any w w did you have any aspirations to be a musician? Yeah, yeah, when I was like when I was like, you know, 14, 15, you know, I got a guitar and I you know, I would strum on that and I didn't really know how to play and then somebody showed me a power chord. I was like the coolest thing in the world. Um, and then I was like actually was like into drums 
like when I first started learning how to play music. So, you know, I had like a drum set that I got for Christmas. I played that. Me and my cousin used to just jam cover songs all the time. Um, and then when I was like, see, like early 20s, I was in this band called Instilled from Atlanta. It was like a hardcore band. Um, I would play bass, but I did not own, did not own a bass or any equipment um, at all. You know what I mean? I was just like, hey, cool, I'll be in the band, you know? And so, you know, we played shows. You know, we did like a tour once. Um, so, you know, like that's the extent of my music history. Like I definitely was in the band, but like, I mean, I could barely play the bass, to be honest. I had a lot of equipment. So that was kind of my... <laughs> You know, I was I was in that for like three years maybe, and then wow, that was it. After that, I never did music until the last three or four years. And and so, which which sort of uh, pushes us, uh, brings us in the direction of 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 conservative military image and, and forming the band. Was this? I sort of think like was this something that when you were out there, when you were deployed, is this something that just you just kind of formulated and just started kind of putting together a strategy for when you got out or, or, or putting together like this is something, you know, if and when I ever get out of here, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I Well, when I was in, I learned, you learn a lot about like regulations and stuff like that. And you have to do all this history and studying and you have to learn all these you know, acronyms and all these like different types of things. And I was always like, man, I was like, why are there not more veterans like in like punk and hardcore bands like there's just a wealth of, of like stuff to pull from here and it's like i'm like man like this is crazy that there's like all this awesome stuff to pull from um and i was always like why aren't there more you know music or veterans who are active in these bands uh i was definitely like the whole time i was in um i had no plans of ever doing a band at all but i was when i was studying for like the board or whatever to become a sergeant I like went through the regulation manual and I saw, you know, the soldier will maintain a conservative military image at all times. Like that's a direct quote from like the AR 670-1, like authorized. Right, right. Wear with the uniform. And I was like, man, that is a, that would be a hard band aid. I was like, that is such a hard band aid. <laughs> and so I stored it off of that. I was like, man, I was like, one day somebody will need a band name or something. And I'm like, this is, the band and then so i had all been holding on to that one for like well over a decade um but um you know when i decided to start doing the band like a couple of years ago um you know i just had this like wealth and i had all this stuff to talk about and i had just this like you know essentially this massive stockpile of material and experiences to pull from and that's kind of really what helped like get the wheels rolling as far as like, creating when, when when you when you were uh, deployed, were you always writing? Did 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 did, did you um, are you a guy that like kind of you know wrote stuff oh, down? Yeah. I, I mean, sure. because um, all along the way, band or not. Yeah, man, I've I've, I've been writing dude, since like since I'm 18, man. Kept keeping a journal, like writing like poetry or writing poems or writing just like observations or you know, making lists in a notebook of like, oh, I should see that movie or listen to this record. Or I would see something like, oh, that book, you know, like read that book or check into this. Or if I ever saw like a cool line or something, I would say. So I've been writing in some aspect for my whole life. Um, I kind of would like write lyrics, but you know, it was, there was no, you know, end game for it. So yeah, yeah. You know, that's why I call it like poetry or poems instead, because I would write like I was writing for a band, but there wasn't anything like that. So yeah. when it was time for me to actually start writing lyrics like for this project, uh, like it just it comes really naturally to me. I, I'm never like not in a headspace that's like I'm always like looking for, you know, inspiration or, you know, remembering things. And I still I still keep like written log it's not as you know active as it used to be because a lot of the stuff's on the phone but yeah, i still yeah. i'm very into like pen and paper so um i still do that but yeah i've been writing in some aspects for my whole adult life and i definitely am very grateful that i did that because when it was time for me to like ex express what happened if you turn it, you know into a you know song or something it, it was it comes really naturally 
Yeah, some, I think something can be said for the the brick and mortar process of, of, mm -hmm. of, of writing mm -hmm. a song. I know a lot of people work on computers or this and that, but I mean, for me, you know, writing writing a song or, or, or writing a script or whatever, I, I, I like I like writing it out initially. Uh, it gives yes. me it, 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 there's a different feel to it. Uh, you know, I really feel like you're, you're like digging the ditch, so to speak, you know? Yeah. Cause especially when it comes to like, when it, when it starts coming out, like it comes really fast. Right. Yeah. yeah. And like <laughs> my brain is like lightning and it's like, I'm racing my brain to be like, all right, hurry, hurry up, hurry up. You know what I mean? I, yeah. And I don't get that with like typing, you know, oh, there's a typo or something that I go back or, oh no, no, no. I didn't mean to write that. You know, it's like, I don't have as much instant control as I do in writing. And also, like you said, it's the physical like medium itself, right? It's the pen, it's the paper, it's like a bottle of wine or a cigarette. You know what I mean? It's like when you're pulling this out, this is what it's for. And you know, when you're writing, uh, there's like if your phone goes off, it doesn't matter, right? Like you are still, you know, the workflow is there. So I, I honestly, I I love doing that, and I would highly suggest that to anyone who is trying to be a little bit more creative. Is like, dude, just buy buy like a five dollar pen, right? Like a five dollar pen. Oh, that's a nice pen. You know what I mean? Like, buy a buy a five dollar pen and get yourself like a little notebook that's like, you know, whatever the cheapest one is. Just go like one or two above that. You know, that's all you need. If you start doing that, then like I'm a nerd, man. I like know my I like know the size and the ink flow, you know, and of all the the pens. Yeah, and, and, uh, Joe Ackerman, Tallahassee. Lyrics come anytime from anywhere. Got to stay ready. So, Absolutely, man. Yeah, I, I find that happening a lot to me, too. I'll be somewhere and I'll be like, something will be, you know, fuck. You know, just yeah. a great two lines. Yeah, like, yeah. Two fucking lines. Yeah. I'm like, fuck. You know? I don't you know, like, say it out loud, too, or I'll like, whisper yeah, it yeah. to my it out loud like three or four times. I've, I've, te I've texted it to myself, like you, you know, like just two lines. Like I don't want, I don't, I don't want to for, forget that, you know. So, so, yeah. so, th um, so that said, um, so let, let's let's uh, move to to how did conservative military image come about? Uh, you 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 come out of the service. Uh, walk us through sort of, uh, you know, uh, what was the impetus to, to put this to put the band together. Um, I always thought that like to me the heaviest or like hardest bands were like these like really like extreme and fast like punk bands. To me that was like, you know, I, I listened to like metal and like black metal, you know, and stuff like that for, for a long time. Um, and yeah, that's extreme. But for me it was like the like, these like bomb of energy where you just see four dudes just thrashing hard and some twerk guy just like, screaming. It was just like the song for like 40, 50 seconds. To me that was always like, the hardest and heaviest thing. So, you know, it was also the easiest to play. So like kind of use it going off of that idea. Like, okay, I think I'm gonna, you know, I got, you know, some spare time. I was like, you know, fuck around and see what we could do. So I actually bought a guitar and like taught myself like how to play guitar properly. Like, mm. um, so I did not really know how to play guitar before I started the band. So I was like, all right, you know, write some songs or whatever like that. And in the original inception of the band, like I was just gonna play bass. Like I was looking for a singer essentially, you know. Um, because I was like, there's no way I could sing, like no way. Like I don't have the voice, like I can't. So, I can't so singing singing wasn't even on the agenda. Not at first, no. I was just gonna be in the bass a bass player and I was like looking for the band. And then like, you know, it was long story short, after like two years or something of like trying to find people or somebody would do it. You know, I kind of was just like waiting around and like, man, nothing's happening. And I was like, I went to a practice space when like I yelled into a microphone by myself and I was like, and recorded it. And I was like, played it back and I was like, man, that doesn't suck. I was like, it's not good, but it doesn't suck. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing. And so literally the first time I ever like intentionally like screamed into a microphone was like when pressed record to do the demo. <laughs> and, so, and, yeah, go on. I'm sorry. Uh, so like, you know, I could only do like a song or two songs at a time before I completely lost my voice. So like going through that over. Oh, you, you too? 
<laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, your voice is an instrument, so I had to learn how to kind of do that. Right. Um, so once I was able to like to yell into a microphone and hear it back and not want to like hang myself, I was like, we'll we'll figure it out along the way. <laughs> so that's kind of once I was once I had hammered that down, like with doing the singing, then I was like, all right. Where, where I go. And so I played, you know, I wrote songs and I played everything myself. You know, everybody wants to be in a band until it's time to be in a band, you know. Right. Is that, so, is that, you, is that the, this first recording? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Tell, so, so this, this, I've, I've, this is pretty incredible. So you, you, you played everything on this, including drums? Yeah. But so with the drums on that, I didn't actually play the, um, like a live drum set. I bought I a, I bought a like sixteen pad MIDI pad, and I played like finger drums like on the pads and like all the like, fills and everything. Boop, bap, boop, bap, boop, bap, boop, bap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm not kidding you. Just for those songs, just to do like with those five songs or whatever, it took uh -huh. me three months, three months, <laughs> three months to get all the drums because wow. the drums were done first, and then I just recorded everything. So yeah, I was like playing like finger drums and then I would play it back and hit the cymbal to like do the like the fill or whatever. Um, and Incredible. then after that, yeah, yeah, it was cool. I, dude, when, I, when I was doing this record, I thought this is it. I was like, I had this idea, this vision, I'm gonna put it together in a full package. I'm gonna like put all of my energy into it and then boom, it's out in the wild and it's done. Um, and so like, that was it. Once this like went out, I thought, all right, cool. I did that. It was. It's cool. Maybe one day we'll play a show or something. Right. Uh, and it just, it got legs and like people kind of gave a shit about it. And it was like, whoa, crazy. And then it's a lot easier to get like people in a band when you have like a proof of concept. Sure. You know, Absolutely. You know what I mean? well, Look, a, hey, a band or anything else for that matter, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's, exactly. It's, it's a business, right? Like I'm being a salesman. I'm trying to sell people on my band. So it's like, hey, you should join this band, right? I mean, I wouldn't want to be in a band. Somebody's like, here, I got this idea. It's like, all right, cool, man. But if they come back and they're like, check this out, you want to be part of this. Well, then I'm like, oh, yeah. And that's how it was the idea. It's like, cool. Absolutely. It's the same as, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, you want to make a film? Go out and shoot a trailer. You know? Yeah. yeah it, exactly. It's the same thing I'm doing right now with my uh, Brooklyn Heist film, Finders Keepers. Uh, we went out. I spent a couple bucks. We got a couple. I shot a trailer. Now, like you said, Proof of concept is, is, yeah. is, is, is really is really a key word. I, I want it shows, to it shows the person and shows them that you are sincere and you're actually like you give a shit and not just like oh, I have this idea and I'm kind of bored. It's like no, there's there's a lot more to it. Well, Pete, well that whole thing of like you know I have an idea or I have a pitch is this is a new world we live in and yeah. and when people yes, come sir. to me now and say hey I have an idea for you know for a film or I have an idea for a reality show. It, it ideas don't do it anymore. You, you almost you have to put together a sizzle reel. You have to put together a trailer. You have to put together a deck. I mean, this is Ooh. this is the, the new era that we it new era. That we, so I, I'd like you know in doing my homework, uh, I, I just I'd like to quote you regarding regarding um, you know the EP. Um, I was working on this project for myself for nearly a year before the Skinhead EP dropped in March of last year. I wanted to do this band for a very long time. But for one reason or another, I couldn't get it off the ground. Finally, I said, fuck it. I'll do it myself. When I dropped the album, I legitimately thought that was it. I put out something that didn't suck, and maybe some people will hear it. But it just yeah. took off and kept getting more traction. People were stoked on it. From there, I was able to assemble a band with some of my favorite people and closest friends. Yeah, that's that. I mean, it can't be said. I said it like that once, and it, that can't be said. Yeah, that, that's, that's sort of that's sort of the the, the in in granite. So once once this came out, um, what I wanted. To, so what format? But at first, you just put it out yourself. Did you just release it digitally? Was it a cassette? Or how did it come out at first? Yeah, I just put it out on Spotify. Um, right. And it was originally on Bandcamp, and then like. We kept getting deleted and banned from Bandcamp, so I just was like, "Screw this! Uh, I'll just do it on Spotify." So I put it up on Spotify, um, and then, yeah, that was there was. I mean, did I want to put it out on vinyl? Like, absolutely. Sure. You know, I had like the full artwork already done, the insert and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I, don't, I didn't know like what you know. There's a, there's a thousand bands. Like, 
what am I going to do? Like go, you know, message some label and be like, Hey, would you put this out for me, please? You know? So I, I just put it out streaming. And then like, I think it was like maybe a month after it was up, Lionheart messaged me and was like, Hey, is there plans for a physical release for this? And I was like, I mean, there's no plans, but I would like to. And did, did, did you know, did, did you know who Lionheart was? Were they on your radar screen at all? Were you familiar with other releases? Yeah, yeah, I was familiar with Lionheart for sure. Okay, um, okay. Previous releases. Right on. Um, uh, so I was excited because I, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, they got a great like a built in audience, essentially. And I was like, but you know, I didn't know how serious it was. It was just a kind of a yeah. message. And I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then Christian was like, yeah, I'd love to do it. And I was like, well, let's do it. And so, you know, it was like four or five months later. And then, you know, we stayed in touch and did everything. And then he put it out. And, I, you know, once, once that Lionheart did the physical release for it, I was like, Boom. Like that was really when it started like getting legs. But uh, Anthony from Battle Scar put out he put out that that EP on cassette as well. So that was on the cassette bef like a month before it came out on the vinyl, I believe. So so you put it you, so you put it out basically digitally. Anthony stepped in as a cassette release in the States and Lionheart yeah, yeah. as vinyl in Europe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, hey, he man. put that out. Hey, man, not, not bad out of the gate, man. I mean, that's great. Oh, for sure, man. I, it's you awesome. Like, I would have been happy right there, dude. I would have been like <laughs> sick. <laughs> right. Let's do it and just kick the ass. Uh, yeah. You know, and then off of the reception of that seven inch with Lionheart, Christian from Lionheart was like, hey, if you ever do anything again, like, I want to do it. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, funny enough, is I've already got five other songs done. And so. He put out the next album, Overtime Skinhead. Was, was this, I believe, the next release? Was it Summertime Skinhead? Yeah, yeah. That was the next one. So it's, most of those yeah. songs were actually written around the same time that I did the, the demo. But I was like, well, I don't want to put out like, you know, a full length as a first release. I was like, that's kind of odd. So like these songs were kind of like the ones that either weren't finished or didn't make the cut for the demo sure. by this time. So this only came out, I think like four or five months after the demo. Wow. Right, time, right on the heels of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, like you were saying earlier, it's a different climate, man. Like you yeah. can't just yeah. like put something out and then just cruise on it. There's yep. thousands of things vying for your attention and your energy at all times. Like everything is, everyone is fighting for you. So if you are not relevant in the front of people's brains, you know, they're going to be just not even intentionally. They're just going to be like, they're going to forget about it. But oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Right. So the idea was to constantly have this cycle of like trickling material. So that way it's like, oh, you forgot about us. It's only been two months. Here's something else. And so that and was you, the idea. I, I think, you know, you guys have absolutely, you know, executed, uh, executed that ethos of like, you know, uh, new song, new EP, uh, constantly. It's not. Yeah, like, it's fun let's too, wait, man. Let's wait, a, let's wait, wait a year for the next fucking thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like it's yeah, fun right. to like, constantly have this. Like, oh crap! Like one of those I love. Like, oh, another song, you know? Like it's right. fun for it's me. Great. And also, it, like it, it's kind of a nod to like you know and the singles that bands used to sure. put out. Like I love, I love the Smiths and I love Morrissey. I I don't really like Smith's full length albums. Like they're not that good. All their best songs are singles that they put out, and then all of my, my favorite like releases are compilations of all their singles. Like for me, yeah. so that was kind of an inspiration for it was to be like boom, boom, boom. You know, like here's reminds me, of the, it reminds me of like the the Clash, the early Clash stuff. They they would put yeah. out singles and EPs and flexi discs and just really yes. you know just keeping. Just, just, just keeping the fl the flow going. You know, you, you yeah. mentioned you mentioned that once the release was out, you know, then 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 you could kind of circle back and put a band together. Tell us about like what that you know what was the process of that, and and who did you reach out to? So after the demo came out, um, is when I met Frank, our drummer, um, and so I met him, um, and. Like we were buddies, but I didn't even know he played drums until I saw the this band called Skinhead 
played their very first show in Florida. And I was there and I saw Frank playing drums for it. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know this dude played drums. Cause like him and I are like, we are like one and the same when it comes to music and like how we approach music. And we're like big riff nerds and we listen to all yeah. these weird parts of songs. So we had all like loved Talk Shop. And when I I saw him after the show, I was like, dude, I didn't know you played drums. I was like, you're fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, I got this like this project, this band going on. I was like, would you be interested in playing drums? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, when I said it to him, he was like, oh shit, like, oh, you already, there, there's already a band going on here. He's like, yeah, I'm all in. And I was like, awesome, dude. So Frank was the first guy that I like, I got like to be in the band. And it was just maybe like a month or two. Oh, you know what? Actually, I don't even think the demo was out then. It was like right before it came out. So he plays drums on Summertime Skinhead. That was like his first, like he's played drums on everything ever since then. So, um, and, and, yeah, Frank, and, he's, and he's still playing with you. He's still playing oh, yeah. with you to this day. This is like, uh, it's my like, kind of like my passion project or my like idea but this is not like my band you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. the band like, the, the guys that you see on stage like with us it's the same dudes who've been in the band the entire time okay, and will always be in the band like i'm really adamant about like i want this rotating cast of like yes men it's like sure. the whole point of a band is that a band like a collective group um these are all my, my friends like who of who are all talented and like it's been the same band from our first show and it always will be like right on you know what so, i mean and, and like, that's and that's that's you uh chris frank and, and austin from haywire right yeah and chase as well chase plays bass yep that's the band so you know i collect them like, essentially like one at a time recruited i'm like after frank, <laughs> frank and i were together then i then chase was like hey you know he came up to me and showed me, he was like, you need somebody to play bass? And I was like, uh, actually, I do. And I was like, if you're serious about it. And then he had the equipment. And he was like, yeah, I'm in. I was like, my man. I was like, you got the gig. It just fell together like that. That's great. Yeah. And, and like, everyone's been friends with each other before the band. So that was also like pretty crucial. There's already that element of familiarity. That helps, man. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a band, I'm in a band now, I'm a couple years older than you, but everybody in the band, you know, we, you know, we're friends, you know, we're, we're, we're friends and, and it's, and at this stage of the game to be in a band with a bunch of people that, that you don't mind being in a van with and, and that you, you consider friends as opposed yeah. to whatever, whatever other situation really makes playing music at this stage of the game for me at my age, uh, really enjoyable once again, like it was when, when I, when I was a young person. And and that that bond that bond is important, man. I, I agree. I, I say this to everybody, dude. If if you're not having fun, what are you doing it for, man? If yeah. if you are miserable or something that's not cool, or you know you're just dragging along or whatever, it's like, dude, this do something else. Like if you're having fun doing that, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like figure it out. Go go do something else. Like yeah, I'm having fun like with this band. I'm having fun with these guys. Like this is the whole idea, man. Like life is just life is filled with a lot of stress and chaos and you know tough like I, I want to have fun you know what i mean like i'm still be responsible still get the job done but i want to have fun dude i ain't got time for for like you know crapping around with some with other some other you know bush league stuff dude so you, i'm having fun and that's the idea is and you know what's awesome is when you're having fun all the other stuff like it gets so much easier <laughs> absolutely you, I'm down to put up with like long drives, bullshit, sleep, you know, or or just regular stressors of being man. I'm down for all that if I'm having fun. <laughs> I mean, I I want to I want to ask you about the name, but before we go there, you mentioned the long drives and stuff. Things have really the trajectory of the band. I mean, you guys were pretty quickly sort of thrown into a situation where you know you 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 you're working hard you 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 you're swinging the axe you're touring you're taking these big drives was was that something that you hoped would happen but it happened kind of quick didn't it oh absolutely man i mean we played our first show december 9th of 2022 so it's been wow. like a year a year and four months That's great since our first show and you know um it was originally like i was like dude i'm not trying to tour or any of that stuff i was like 
you know, we'll play a couple of shows here and there, do a weekend run here or something right. like that. Right. And then the demand and like just the like amount of people that come here, play here, you know, or like blah, blah, blah. Or like, and then us getting offers of like, well, you know, we'll buy all your plane tickets if you guys play here type stuff. And I was like, I was like, man, I guess this is like, there really is an urge to do this. And it just worked out really well with everybody else in the band. Like, was had the ability to go full time on this band, so it is a little well, bit of luck. That's a big, that's a big, big part of it. It's like yeah. you, you, you were fortunate to have uh, some droogs with you that that yeah. really could go all in. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like because I was I like, mean, I, and, and I'm in a family, like, yeah. yeah, the the, the holdup, you know, that would have been. And then when everybody was like, "Hey, no, 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 like I really, I want to do this. Like I'm all in." Then I was like, "All right, well, let's do it." And so the more we play you know the more people see us but also like you know the, m the more we play the more money we make right and so if, if we're making enough money for everybody to be able to sustain a life you know a, a living thing then let's go for it you know what i mean i'm asking a lot of these dudes you know to be like hey you know don't work for four days so we can go out of state and go you know you know be rockers you know they're losing the opportunities with their family or money you know what i mean like so the idea is you know but it's worth it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. They're all, they're all, me, and, 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 uh, so I, I think I'd be amiss not to, um, not to ask you a little bit about the name and you know what, once again, let, let me, let me, let me quote you. Cause I think, I think, I think it was, it was right on. And then you could sort of give me, you, you could, you could adjust it. Uh, you know, where did the name come from? And, and your quote is, ugh. This has been the bane of our existence from day one. We've been deleted from Instagram, Instagram three separate times, banned from Bandcamp with no explanation, uh, just as many. I knew what I was doing when I named this band, when I created the artwork, when I wrote the lyrics. This is punk. We are poking the hornet's nest. People see the word conservative and they get triggered. Blah, 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 blah. I could go on forever. The easiest way for me to explain this band for someone is like this. The music we make, the art we create, the things we say are for anyone, but we are not for everyone. You know, yeah, so that's the that's the mission statement of CMI. I love it, bro. I love it. We are we are for anyone, but we are not for everyone. I and I truly it. believe that. <laughs> I, anybody's allowed. Anybody's allowed to come to the show. Anybody's allowed to roast. And literally, I do not care. Anybody is allowed to like us. You know what? Yeah. Everybody's gonna like us, and that's okay. If you don't like us, that's fine. There's there's plenty of other things for you to do. But yeah, like that's the, you know, I summed it up pretty much in that statement and that was yeah. the idea. Like I knew the band name was like, I knew, I knew that it was going to be a thing for a lot of people. <laughs> I knew it. Um, uh, I could probably could not have predicted how, how many different ways that has like come back to like bite me in the ass maybe. Yeah. Um, if, but in the long run, it was actually like probably the best decision because it, it's like a, it's like a trigger word for a lot of people, man. They see yeah. the word conservative and they immediately get triggered, right? Whether that means something positive, negative, neutral, extreme, whatever, but it is a very polarizing word. Um, it's just because it's so like, so affiliated with politics, right? Like oh, I think conservative, you would think you know, Bush and Trump. And it's like, I don't know, man, it's a word, right? And it has meanings and different meanings and it's used, right? Like people say, um, you know, I'm being conservative with my finances, right? That doesn't mean like I'm being a Republican with my finances. Conservative is a, it's a word, right? So then to see military, like right after it, where it's, right, you know what I mean? Right. So I was, it's like, I'm like, you're either going to see that man and you're going to go, what the hell is that? I got to hear that. And then, they, that and, then, and then they see you. And, it, and then, <laughs> oh, yeah. then they, right then they see you and they just go, ah, oh, well, oh, yeah. well, without without I hearing check. anything. Yo, yeah, exactly. I check all the blocks, dude. I'm like, I'm like two tiers removed of a cop, you know. Right. Oh, he's like, what is that? Mustache, muscles, tattoos. You know, it's just like, look, he's a, he's a cop. You know, it's just like, all right, man. Right, right. I'll, I'll be, I have this. I'll be, your, I'll be your villain, man. If that's what you need, you want me to be the villain, then. I'll be the villain to your to your weird narrative, man. Sure. I was like, but you, I don't know. It sounds so lame. It's like, oh, you, you judge me. Whatever. 
Of course, I look like this, so whatever you feel, however. But yeah, you know, it's a package deal. It's the name, and then you see the image, right? Because I don't give a fuck what anybody says, man. Everybody cares how they look. Everybody does, mm -hmm. in yeah. some way or another. Are, are you um, are you happy with with with, uh, with with Lionheart and 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 sort of uh, you know uh, what? Because they've been released. They've they've released pretty much everything. Since right, yeah, they've done they've done everything. I will never, never not be on Lionheart team, man. Honestly, they've done so much for us, and like I, I owe like a considerable debt to them for not only like helping elevate us to like the band that we are now, but also like, man, he's he's like I'm super like. I'm like an, an art bag nerd guy. Like I love like creating and like trying to, you know, invoke emotions or, or about, you know, with artwork. Um, so everything is very particular, you know, and he just gave me like free, cause I do all of the artwork for the band. So like all of the art that we've done, like I do with the full design and everything. So, so, so you're, you're, me, basically, you're basically the, the in-house graphic designer for the band. Yes, sir. That's how I view the band. It's it's not yeah. just a band. It's almost like it's an umbrella term for a, a creative collective, essentially, like an art house, yeah. right? We're yeah. more than a band, right? It's like we do. It could be whatever it wants to be. Like we could be whatever. Like if we want to be a label and release other bands, we can do that. You know what I mean? That's kind of the idea. It was like a full full spectrum, you know, uh, thing. But Lionheart gave me like full full freedom to just be like, yeah, whatever you want to do. And I was like, really? And so it was, I was able to kind of see some of the ideas that I had come to life really quickly. Um, and it was awesome. And like, he's just Christian, the dude who runs it's just cool dude, man, like super, super chill down for everything. And, you know, just big help. Um, and, so, and it's, it's really, it's really great that you, you sort of, how they, 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 they kind of reached out to you and now you've, you've created this alliance. And one thing that I noticed, which, you know, there's been a couple of releases that, you know, some of the stuff's like a 12, it's like a 12 inch, uh, single sided 12 inch. Right. And yeah. And, yeah. Like, for like, this one, like yeah, like most labels would be like, nah, you know? So I agree. It was his idea. He was the one who wanted to put that out. Cause I was just like, you know, I put that, we put that song out and I was like, you know, I love this song so much. I was like, cool. He was like, let's put this out. I was like, dude, you sure? I mean, it's just one song. And he's like, yeah. I was like, all right. I was like, it's fine. If we're going to do it though, we're going to make this package for this one song just insane. So it's like a full color gatefold, just like it's a massive undertaking for just one song. But I kind of feel like because he was so down to do it, I was like, all right, cool. I didn't want to, you know, pressure anybody into doing that. But that's, why it also works because it's just one song. You know what I mean? It's hard to explain, but it's no, like no, no, I, no. I, I think it ties in with what we were talking about before, which is you know the spirit of you know getting the stuff out there, man. You know, yeah. you, you know. I feel I feel like maybe some of the old guard is a little it, you know holds it too close to the chest. It's a little too precious. You know, yeah. like we have to get a whole album's worth of stuff. It's gonna you know, but I, I love. I love what you're doing of let's build it. Let's get it out there. Let's build it. Let's get it out there, you know, and just keep that flow going. And, and, and you know what, that's the fucking world we live in now, man. It's like, you know, get it out there, keep it moving. People Dude, have an I, attention I, span of this these days, you know, I tell people that all the time, man. I really do. Like I've been really fortunate to meet a lot of people like over the last year and a half because of this band. And, you know, they told me, you know, talk to people after shows or whatever, or even just through, like, Instagram. And they've been, and, like, your band really helps me, whatever, you know, do this. And so I, I would tell everybody I talked to, I was like, look, whatever it is that you're trying to do, I was like, you have to just, just do it. And I know you're going to hear that all the time, but you really do. And it doesn't have to be a band, man. I spent yeah. so many years wasting my time because I was like, oh, I can't sing. I can't play guitar. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to do drawing. And I was like convinced myself that I couldn't do any of that, you know? Yeah. And so when I finally was like, had enough, and I was like, well, I'm just I'm gonna learn that. So I taught myself how to draw, I taught myself how to play guitar. You know, I was like, just go for it, man. Because like, I just turned 40, you know? Like, I could have done this band 10 years ago, you know? And, you know, 
who, who knows? But like I could have done it then and I didn't. So I did it now. So it's like, it's better to just go all in on it and have it done and then whatever. And to say, what if, could have, because you know what? Everybody, everybody's got an excuse. Dude. Everybody has an excuse. But like, where are the achievements, right? Achievements, not excuses. An achievement is seeing something all the way to the end. And now here it is. An excuse was not going to do it, but you know, whatever. You know, I, I, I am, I am my results, you know, exactly. you know, I, I, I am my results and, and, and I, and I, and I live by that, but you know, I'm, I'm, but in my case, you know, I'm like a first wave American hardcore motherfucker. You know, it's like, I came up with get up, get out and make it happen. No one's going to hand you anything, you know, yeah. uh, you know, get, and that's, so, you know, I came in in the first wave and that was the mentality, you know, if you're not going to be in a band, start a fanzine. If you're not going to yeah. do that, take some pictures, promote, promote the show. So, yeah. you know, that, that's, I, I came up in that sort of, in that sort of gene pool and have lived my life that way ever since with the films that I've made and everything. I'm not, you know, just, just, you want to do it, do it. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Do that. I, you know, I love hearing that. It fires me up, man. And all of that that you just said about that first wave is stuff that like, um, is is just really I don't want to say it's missing, but it's it's not as when that stuff started. Like when this stuff started, it was us versus them. It was yeah. like this is there we this go. Is our thing. This is there what we, we do, and it's they are the enemy. They are not. They have no say in what we're doing here because this is this is what we're doing. And I I feel like some of that a lot of that mentality has been lost, and that for better or worse. But the idea was. To do exactly what you said, to try to make it this thing where it's like, hey, nobody's looking out for you, man. It, if you think they are, you're going to be spending a lot of time waiting for somebody to show up. And no one's going to show up. I was like, yeah. there's only one person who can change how you feel, or what you want to do, and it's you. And if you surround yourself with people who feel that same way, it's life gets fucking awesome. <laughs> Yeah. And when you surround yourself with people who have that same mentality, of like if everybody, if everybody even felt a little bit about that, you see it's collective of like positive energy, right? We're trying to change. We're trying to do something, being creative, and that just bleeds it's into so many other aspects of your life beyond, right? Like punk hardcore shows, it bleeds into all these other aspects of your life where you feel like, you know, it's like when you when you hear stories about like people from your generation, like. Who like wound up being lawyers, you know, or like those are the people we need, man. Like that's how I always view Henry Rollins is like, oh, we got a guy, an inside man. Like, oh, he's a, he's on that team, but he's an, he's one of ours. He's an inside guy, right? To yeah. see people who come from this awesome community. And there's a couple of there's a couple of them out there, you know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's a there's a lot of them, and it's real. Yeah. For me, to me, that's like the ultimate. It's like infiltrating where you're like, oh, I'm not really supposed to be this successful, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, we, we, we got we got we got a councilman here in New York that you know was and is in a hardcore band, you know uh, Justin Br Justin Brannon, you know yeah 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 it was, it was a fucking it was a hardcore kid and he's a fucking yeah, councilman. it's like wow that's that you know and then, and then there's all there's some of the other stuff that's like you know you know Duff from Guns N' Roses was in a hardcore band. You know, yeah, Moby, yeah. Moby was in a hardcore band, and it's like, all right, you know, we'll cut, we'll cut these dudes some slack, you know. Yeah, right, for sure. They get, they get the, they get the hall pass. And also, man, like the things that you learn in like those environments make you so much better, like in the outside world, right, or a corporate world, or an academic world. Like, when you have some of the things that you learned about, you know, like. People like you see like normal people and they're like, oh, these are my these are my boys, these are my friends, and it's like, man, dude, are they really your friends? Like, are they really your boys? Like, have you ever been in situations where like your friendships truly been tested? Where it's like, hey, I have I need a place to stay now, no question asked. Yeah, sure, got you. Man. Or have you ever, are those friends gonna stick around when something's going off and you wind up fighting somebody by yourself? You know. Yeah. Stuff like that. So that mentality of like learning, man, like you, the people around me are really on my team and I'm on their team. When you when you feel that way, it's like oh, cool. Absolutely. It bleeds absolutely. In it. You, you know, you mentioned you mentioned something before and, and I'll touch on that. It's 
coming co coming from the first wave. What 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 what, what sort of in this in this world we live in now, uh, things are really um, fractured and segregated. And and like we talk about, you know, the the the, the original hardcore thing or and what's going on now. And what's interesting now is something that's been around for a minute is that there's like five hardcore scenes in New York and they have nothing to do with each other. It's really, it's, it's, That's it's, pretty wild. it's kind of fucking bizarre. There's like yeah. five, five different hardcore scenes and, and there, and there's no, and there's no overlap, which it, it, what, what reminded me of that was when you brought up, it used to be us and them, you know, yeah, yeah. now it's like, it's, it's, it's a really different, uh, you know, topography out there, but, it, it, it's yeah. it's it's bizarre. There's there's like different different uh, fractures and 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 all that, and that, that sort of that sort of makes me sad sometimes. And you know, I I, I did in doing my homework, um, you know, a, an influence that you mentioned was this band, and oh, this absolutely. sort of a a a, a big uh, you know uh, uh, landmark uh, 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 watershed moment for you was get was when the could you tell us a little bit about this band and 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 how it influenced you oh man absolutely warzone was like when i first started like my after being really into like punk and then kind of learning a little bit more and going deeper and deeper like when i found out about victory records um it's like uh when i discovered warzone like and i i mean the first warzone record i heard was like i think it was the, like the victory years one it was like the blue cover with the the iron cross on it which was like a collection of like some of their yeah. their earlier stuff um yeah. but like you know so I, I worked backwards right like i didn't right. i wasn't I didn't come up like with this record it's like yeah this is my bible i kind of worked backwards <laughs> with one of them. um and you know by this point i was like yeah punk and hardcore i was like yeah all in on it too right and to see like how you know, you'd see other videos or the pictures of like these punks and skins and like, you know, youth crew looking dudes like all together, like playing songs and going to these shows and stuff like that. I always thought it was like super awesome, man. I was like, it really spoke to me, like, because those were like all my favorite genres. And it never did, it didn't seem like hokey, you know what I mean? And like, there's so much lore about rabies and everything. And, you know, yeah. there's no, I don't even think there's ever been a bad word said about that, man. <laughs> But like, uh, just like the things he was saying, it was like, it was kind of cheesy, but it was like sincere, you know, and it wasn't just like posturing. You really, I don't believe that. Like, I mean, the band's called Warzone, dude. Like, that's such a cool band name. It's like the perfect band name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like. That was a big one. Know, and Ray, Ray, brought, Ray brought a lot of people together. Absolutely, absolutely right. And, yeah, and he was a veteran too, right? So and he's that's Navy right. Ray was a Navy guy. Yeah. And so like, you know, all checking all those blocks and stuff like that, man. And he was just like, a, I, I never met him obviously, but like, he's a funny dude, you know, like he, he was smiling a lot and he's kind of like, you know, first he's had like a, a really, really strong influence on me, like without ever meeting him. I know that sounds kind of weird, almost like a celebrity type thing, but I, you know, I just like, the band's awesome and he just seemed like such a genuinely awesome person who kind of brought two extremes together you know and I, I had noticed that that had been like a long time now of that not happening right like there was like there was no like punk or skin guys like going to hardcore shows you know it was two different lanes and if you went to one show you like you didn't really tell anybody you know that you were going to that show you just went there and then went home so kind of like bringing two dream cultures back together, like how it used to be like in your time. I don't know, for me it was something that I was like, you know, I it was missing. And I think. And, was, and, you know. and I mean, from, from what I, from, you know, what I've gathered uh, as far as uh, conservative military image goes, I mean, I see you guys, you know, uh, going out, playing shows, going all over, going to Europe, you're going back to Europe. And uh, yeah. you guys are you guys are very polarizing. You know, pe people are people people are people are coming from all directions. You know, it's and it's, it's great. It's, it's really cool. Though. It's great, man. I just got to say that, like, it, it you know, it really makes me feel great because you guys are so hot out of the gate. It's been what two years, maybe three years, 
And, you know, usually, you know, you people slog away and this and that. And, you know, it's so it, it just it really it, 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 it really makes me happy to see uh, you guys come out of the gate like that and, and, and have the success that you're having. I, I really make it. It's great. You know? I, I really do. I sincerely appreciate that, man. Like hearing stuff like that coming from from people like yourself who've been doing this for far longer than me. You know what I mean? Like to me, that is that's like the, the, the highest compliment you could ever get. You know what I mean? It's like somebody who who's who's been been there the whole time. You know what I mean? Uh, to me, I really so I appreciate those kind words. That's yeah. kind of for have me you, that have, that makes it all that's the idea. Before before we take a break, before we take a sponsor break, I want I want to ask you about Europe and like how how have you been received? I mean, obviously you've been received well, but you know in Europe, I, I know you're going back there, and, and we'll put up those tour dates a little bit later, but. but Going over there for the first time, like how, how did that, that must have been quite an adventure. Like fill us in on sort of how did Europe take to the band? Dude, well, that's why I was kind of so excited when Lionheart was like wanting to put our stuff out because like, well, this is like we're based in Germany. I was like, this is our like you know our, our gateway into the European market essentially, um, and so because of that, like the fan base for Europe just built super quick and like i don't i mean dude we were not we were not even a band for a year and we went to europe you know what i mean like on a tour and like wow. as a, like nine of the nine of the 12 shows were sold out you know our very wow. first time and like every I'm, dude, I'm not kidding you every show was awesome like we did not play a bad show it was it was wild dude. and like i knew it was going to be good um but like I didn't know how I didn't know it was gonna be that good. Sure. It was like it was the time of our lives. We had so much fun. The show and, every, and everybody held up. Everybody held up. I mean, physically, your voice held up. Everybody sort of everybody because because I, I, I personally I can't I can't go that many days in a row. My voice so, gives out on me. You know, for real. so I was legitimately concerned because at yeah. this before this tour we never toured. <laughs> um before we went to Europe, three shows in a row was the most we ever played. And I yeah, was like, right. I was like, I was like, dude, we're about to do twelve shows. That's my limit. With not a break. <laughs> and I was legit concerned. I was like, damn, dude. I was like, man, I hope my voice holds up. And uh, we actually did. Like, I mean, I was being intentional. Like, you know, as you can tell, like I'm, I love to talk. I'm a talker. Like, I'm very animated. It was hard for me to be on tour because I was like. If I wasn't really trying uh, talking a lot, like in between the shows, you know, I'm like, trying to be quiet, maintain keeping my voice down. You have to have some discipline. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like we'd be in the band, and there'd be these great conversations going on. Yeah, right. <laughs> you no, know? because it's like I start talking loud, and then it's right. So I hear you. Uh, that was tough, but my voice actually held up the whole time. And Good. you know, Good. once you get like three or four days in, you like you get in the pocket, you get a little gravelly. It's like, yeah, this is. I could do this, you know, endlessly. But it was it was definitely um, very exhausting because I don't know if you've seen videos or shows, but like I can't I can't not just like lose my mind. I, I play 110 percent every time. Like I can't not just do it. It's a release. It's a thing for me. You know, I don't know. I wish I wish I was dumb enough to or smart enough to be able to be like, hey, you know, don't do that. But I can't help it. <laughs> You know what? You know what? I've what's happened to me uh, as I've gotten older. You know, doing doing this and, and, and fronting uh, an, a, a band like I, like I do. Well, you know, I was in the High and the Mighty. Then I was in Antidote. Now in Incendiary Device. But what I've sort of learned to do, I'd say, in not the in, let's say in the last decade or whatever, is that I look forward to doing these shows and because they're an incredible release for me personally. It's like yeah. getting, it's like it's like I'm vomiting out all the bullshit, you know. Yeah. I, I, I've learned to sort of calibrate myself that wow, yeah. I, can't, I can't wait for this weekend because you know, and, and it wasn't always like that when I was a teenager or whatever, whatever. But now uh, at my age, you know, I, I really uh, I, I've learned to sort of um, these shows are a great release for like emotional release for me personally. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've learned I've learned to sort of. Um, uh, put that in place that was something i had to like mature into you know yeah now that's awesome to hear man do you still like do you still get nervous before shows like in a weird way or do you, or you is it like a nervous not excitement? no not that much uh, a little bit but but a little bit but, you know not that much i mean 
you know, we're not doing things, you know, we're, we're playing some big shows, but I mean, you guys are, you guys are, you guys are on the big stage. So I, you, you know, but you know, a, li- a little bit here and there, but I, I don't get, I, I, I don't, I don't get, I don't get too, too shook. You know, we just, you know, we always, and I, I'm sure you can relate. It's like when faced with a situation where a big stage, a lot of people, it's like, fellas, let's just keep it tight. Let, let's just stay connected. You know, I always yeah. say to the guys, like, you know, let's not do a show and have no eye contact where everybody's, you know, like, let's stay, let's stay connected in some regard here and we'll be okay. Let's just stay Absolutely. Connected. It is. Yeah, yeah. And I, I also do like, I don't care like what kind of band you are, whether you're like a small new band, some mid-tier band, or like you've been going for a really long time and you're, you know, headlining, you know, arenas or whatever. I think it's really important to do exactly what you say, right? Like, yeah. not, it doesn't have to be before every show, but there's some shows where you're just like, I guess, like, let's bump heads real quick. You know, yeah. eye contact, yeah. like, hey, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, let's do it right tonight. Like, everybody, yeah. you know, like, we did that. We do that before we played This Is Hardcore in August in Philly. It was a big, big opportunity for us. It was a big show. It was like sure. the most amount of people we've ever played. It was like a, a decent spot time. And I was like, I was like, guys, this is a this is a moment here. I was like, yeah. we don't need, we need no nerves and we need no, you know, no no wobbly legs. I was like, we we need the same guys who've been doing this for every show. You know what I mean? And it was, you know, just to everybody to kind of be like, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, because what, what what happens in these in these what happens in these things um, is that you kind of get you kind of end up in sort of the in in, in the uh, you get caught in in, in the uh, the flow you know and and, mm-hmm. and and it happens so fast and then you know so I, I another thing is like be here now right like be here oh, yes. now be conscious yes, yeah that's what I tell my guys that just be you know just the, the, the current that's what I'm saying sometimes you know you you're, you get in there you're in the current and you just and and, yep. and 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 you'll dad you know I wish I would have enjoyed that a little bit you know no, for so. real I mean absolutely agree with you dude I say it all the time I was like you know like this is like your life is not the like, awesome weekend like your life is like Wednesday at 1 30 in the afternoon so what do you how do you feel on that random time at that random day that's your life right yeah, yeah. Like, it's not a great weekends and that same thing is what I try to bring to the band Right, like when we're going to the next show or something, or like, oh, we traveled and the flights were delayed, and it's just been this whole nightmare, you know, just to get here. And the idea is that's like, this is this is why we're here, though. This is what we're, we're doing. These are the best times, like, right now. Like these are the good times. Yeah. yeah. Just to just so, even if it's even if it's just like ten seconds or fifteen seconds of just like pull yourself back, just take it all in. It's it really makes a big difference, man. It was like yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so just want to touch on, uh, so you're heading out in, 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 Ju- in, in uh, middle of June and July, a uh, stronger bookings, uh, you know, are, are putting you out there and yo, you're out there swinging the ax, man. One show after, you know, uh, a couple in a row, one off, you know, you're really, you're really doing one after the other. And you, and listen, you're playing Berlin. SO so 36, you're playing, so you're, you're playing the Iperfest, which is, which is, Fantastic. We we yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I, prof, I professed is fucking awesome. We we in, in Belgium, we've done that. But is, is this is this the biggest excursion you've done over there? Yeah, before, last when we were there in October, we did I think it was 12 shows. And so this is a big, big jump. Um, I think like a lot of these shows are with Slapshot too, um, which is so that's like also another big thing. Um right. and then most of these venues are like considerable you know, like bigger than what we played before. This is, for me, this is like a massive, massive step up. Like we had, yeah. we had so much fun in Europe like last time, but like it like, it took like a lot of pieces to make that tour happen. And yeah. like, there was like a lot of things that like came down to the wire of like securing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. For, for to happen. This one is like, you know, we met, I met with the guys from Stronger, on our first tour, they came to our show. We talked in person, and they're like, "Yo, we'll take care. Do you want to work together?" And I was like, "Hell yeah!" So this is them, like, putting all that, you know, to work. And to see it, it's just been a, a massive relief for me. From like, because I used to have to yeah, do everything, those, getting all the travel things, and it was just, 
yeah. it was so much for me that like I'm I'm already kind of scatterbrained as it is. It was just so much for me that I was like yeah. I couldn't really focus on what I had to do, which is like perform, right? And like do the shows, like all these things. So to be able to pass that to like professional dudes who want us to do it has been awesome. This tour looks great and it's like really funny. Good. This is like such a European thing where it's like, you know, the, the big festival circuit in the summer. And it's like, you know, it's like every band you could ever imagine <laughs> from like every genre, like all on us, you know, sharing a stage, dude. Like one of those shows, one of those shows we're doing is like, I think on the same stage is like Simple Plan and Sum 41. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, we, we used to, we, we talk about this all the time. Like when I, when I was working with Biohazard in the 90s, you'd go out in these European festivals and you'd be like, who's on? We're playing with who? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. David Bowie, Fun Loving Criminals and Kid <laughs> Rock. And we'd be like, all right, cool. And, and, and uh, you know, and some death metal band. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's such exclusive to Germany too. Because like that would like, I mean, it's kind of happened here more recently, but before, even up to like, maybe it's not really a thing. But there, it's just like, no, that's just how it is, man. So yeah. I, I think it's funny and great, honestly. Like, I low key, yeah. I low key up with some one of some plants, so I'm kind of excited to see him. <laughs> and then just let's let's might as well just might as well, we might as well just deal with this is. Before before you head out on that, you're you're doing you're doing dates uh, you're doing dates uh, in the states. You're doing like a Texas run. Um, yeah, Texas yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, oh, t t Texas is uh, you're heading to Texas tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we're heading to Texas tomorrow, and then the first show's on Friday. So we're doing like four shows in a row, and then we yeah. come back for two days, and then we'll be in New York City next weekend. And, and um, we're we're uh, we're playing this we're we're playing that thing too. We're playing the next day, but um, uh, and then you're playing the Black and Blue Bowl uh, after all. Yes, yeah, I'm so pumped for that, man. That's a I'm, good one, I'm, man. Dude, you know what's funny is, um, I, I rented your movie on Amazon like two weeks ago. Which one? And the the New York Hardcore one from like the black the Black and Blue yeah. Bowl. There. I rented it on Amazon and made my wife watch it. Um, right. she's, the, New York, she's, the, New, the New York Hardcore Chronicles film? Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's a, that's a really awesome film, man. Thanks for making that, dude, for real. Like, I think, like, I remember when it came out and I saw it then, but like, rewatching it now, I was just like, yeah. I was like, man, dude, this is like, it's like a full on love letter, dude. I really enjoyed watching that. I thought it was like, it was really, it, the flow of the film was really good. It didn't lull. There was like, everything was entertaining. Or interesting, you know. Uh, I figured it out. I figured that one out, you know, because the, it, it, because it was a hard thing to tackle. How do you tell that story, right? It's like yeah. it's it's like I'm not trying to tell the do the history of New York hardcore. I would need you know 50 hours. And I yeah. thought about I thought about and and what I arrived at was how about like like cards in a deck, you know, like each card is a story, and we shuffle yeah. the deck, and you picked. 10 cards that's yeah. what that that's what that film is there the, each segment is not particularly related to the other one but they're all very vibrant and and, and and important and the one thing that i really love about that film that i did in a lot of ways it's the most joyous film i've done is because yeah. i did it myself i didn't have to fucking deal with anybody else look i, I did the michael lago film i had to fucking deal like god bless him but I had to. It was. A, I had to deal with Michael a lot, you know. <laughs> and, and it's like, yeah. and everything else. I did the boss. But that film that was 100% my vision. I did what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. I didn't have to answer to anybody. And I'm I'm really proud of that film. Dude, as you should be, man. I, I whoever is watching this who has not seen that, that should be mandatory okay. watching. There's something for everybody in there. Like you, whether you've been doing shows for 20 years or one year. Um, You'll see, you'll, there's something. And it's funny too, watching it now, like I realized how many people were in it that I know. You know that I, I know, right? Watching. And I was like, I know, oh, right? oh, you know what I mean? I was like, oh crap. Like, you, you, uh, you know what's interesting is people in that film that I sort of like randomly like pulled into the film, like randomly, like, oh, here's this yeah. kid in the street. And it turns out they end up like in a band, like, oh shit. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, it yeah, yeah. 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 I saw I, I saw at least like five people like that where I was like holy crap I was like that's him before now good, good I, shit I, I'm I'm glad you and your wife uh, enjoy I'm I'm really I'm really proud of that one I'm 
working on a biohazard documentary now, which, like, which yeah, that's cool. It's, that's, watching that got me like real excited for the black and blue bowl because it yeah we just got it, and so I was just like, yeah. I'm I'm really really excited to play that. I love playing New York City. Like, oh yeah, Joe Ackerman do. says I'm in it with Mandy. Yeah, you are. That's right. So exactly, I was like, yo, I was like, yo, I had dinner with that dude. Like, <laughs> this is this Italian side, like the Lower East Side. Like, I was like, and I was like, he was sitting at the table with us, like. And I was like, hey, that's crazy. <laughs> so you were saying about New York City. Does New York City like have a special place for you guys? Uh, I mean, we've it's it, New York City is its own entity, right? It is a, a beast. It's, it's a beast within the rest of the world. Um, there's a case to be made that it's the capital of of the world. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, right. Uh, so we like we've never played a bad show there like every show we played has like wound up being like not only just a good show but like meeting all these people and like just the vibe and hanging out and like seeing how every, you know all these people who like travel to the city you know to come see us is it's been great like the logistics of like staying in new york city are a nightmare like yeah. It's not, it's it's not very easy to do, unfortunately, yeah, it's which can make it very difficult for bands, especially like bands who don't make a lot of money or have a lot of money, right? Yeah. But it's always worth like all of that hassle is the shows that, that we and people that we meet, just everything. It's always worth it. So I, yeah. I'm i not going to lie, dude. I used to talk a lot of shit on New York City. Um, <laughs> was, oh, you're a yeah. Chicago guy. It's mandatory, right? <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, I got a good, you know, I live in a big city. I can, I like what we do. I don't need to go see big, tall buildings and stuff like that. That's all news to me, you know. So I felt kind of bad because I was, like, talking a lot. I was like, ah, man, New York City is just some whatever. You know, and then, like, we play a show there, and I was like, oh, fuck, this, damn, this is so much fun. This is awesome. It was actually, like, a really it, it, cool thing. You know what? I, I keep saying, like, <laughs> I keep saying we need to take a break, but before you go, before we take a break, let, let, while while we're kind of at it, because I, I, I want to shout out Jorge because he does a lot of fucking good work, man. Oh, and, man, absolutely. Uh, he's like, he's like excuse me. He was in the that documentary too. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, he was. That's right. Yeah, briefly, I saw him. So, I was like, yeah, there yeah, but there you go. There's a guy that like I just randomly, you know, just it, yeah, it yeah. Was just as fate would have it. But I want to shout out. Uh, Jorge with Authentic Productions. He's putting on On the Streets uh, again, too. And, um, you know, uh, CMI is headlining the first day. Um, you know, we're playing the second day. Uh, we're really, really excited to be a part of it. Somebody dropped off when we got the call. And so we're really grateful for that. Because uh, I said, please. Yeah. And, and you, know, you know who's on? My boys, The Take, are on with you guys. I did two of their videos. I love The Take. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I like those dudes. And Castillo, which yeah. don't don't even worry about CMI, dude. Go see Castillo. That that <laughs> right. yeah, somebody somebody better give that man a Grammy who is writing them songs. Because there's yeah. some damn yeah. songs on Castillo record. Those guys are great too, man. Intimidation as well. Like we yeah, played shows I, with them. I, I, I've too. never seen I haven't seen them or Castillo. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, and then I'm you're playing to... you're playing on this day with uh, Impact Driver and the Stress. To, yeah, we're, we're on we're on second on the second day right after Impact Driver, and uh, yeah, the stress dude. forty five adapters, the press has been added, so you know, we're, yeah. we're 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 great we're grateful for it. Um, oh, the stress and Impact Driver, man, two real two real good young bands doing it. Yeah, um, you know what? Thanks, Sid. Sid just sent me. Sid just sent me this. Let me uh, let's let's do. I know. Let me just do this real quick. For those that are uh, wondering, hold on, let me get rid of this. And let me put this up. This is the first day of the Black and Blue Bowl, which is a fucking banger this year. I mean, is this, is, this is a banger. I mean, this is a real banger. It's, it's Agnostic Front, 40 Years of Victim and Pain, Slapshot, CMI, Demise. You know, full blown really? chaos. This is this is. I'm look really looking forward to this. This is a great Shout show. Out the world exit strategy. Yep. And big. I gotta say, cousin Joe. You know, and and the B and B people, Freddie and them, really put together a, a great, a great. Uh, not just the first day. The second day is is great as well. So. For sure, so dude. It's so cool. There's just the man, dude. I'm gonna tell you that, like, just to see that flyer and like, see your band name, like 
on the same flyers like agnostic front like yes i don't care i'll never i'll never get used to that like to me that's just like that's the dude i want to go back to myself like when i was 16 and just be like yo dude i was like it's gonna be all right man (laughs) yeah you're you're, you're cool you know hard work and perseverance pays off i'm a firm believer in that you know and uh you know you guys have worked hard and, and and you guys you guys deserve it and uh certainly looking forward to it so let me take this break already and uh, it's going to be a couple minutes. So we'll talk about some upcoming shows, and we'll come back. Uh, you know, I want to talk. I want to talk about the casual violence LP and and what's happening now. And then eventually, we'll take some questions from around the world. So I'll see you in about five, six, seven minutes. All right. It was great. I'll be here. There you go. This is the one, the only New York Hardcore Chronicles live. Our guest today is Adam Voss from Conservative Military Image, and we're bouncing the ball back and forth. Uh, great guest. Love his love the band. Uh, let's do some sponsor stuff and we will keep rolling. Peace, what it do? Welcome to NYT Comics at 117 Main Street, Dob Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs. Toys, collectibles, got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer, video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go. Skate decks all day, baby. We also have the young reader section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, the pops. People love the pops. Star Wars. <laughs> we are New York hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it off. Cash or in debt? Do you mean debit? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Another eternal satisfying customer. Guys, flat from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in new location on West 3rd Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger, we have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to, to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do, and we are happy to see you guys. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area? Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, sir. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and, and we're at it. We're at it again. want to mention a couple of upcoming shows uh, just to get, just to let you know what's up. It's going to be a little bit of a break. Um, we are going, like I said, we're playing out west this weekend, and then I'm going to spend uh, a couple days out there. I actually got booked to do a voiceover for an animated feature film out west and um jack christian from tsol's in it um keith morris and uh they needed a real new york voice so uh i got the call so um i'm gonna be out there a couple extra days so the next time we get together here is sunday march 17th we will have paris mayhew on from agros celebrating the release of a skateboard fight music video Uh, of course if you know the history, Paris and I did a lot of these videos together, have a long history, so we're going to be breaking that video down. A uh, week after that, Mike score from All Out War on March 24th. A week after that, March 31st, Phil Puleo from Cop, Shoot, Cop, and Swans. 
Wednesday, April 3rd, Bob Chaparty from Company Marketing and Foundations Forum. Cliff from The Freeze, Wednesday, April 10th. Sunday, April 14th, by popular demand, John Connolly from Nuclear Assault will be on, co-hosted by Howie Abrams. Just announced this the other day on the show, have yet to put it out on social media. Sal and Dan from the two brothers from Electric Frankenstein will be on the show. That will be co-hosted by Joel Gaustin, as in Boston. And then, here's, here's one for you. You, hear, you heard it here first. Uh, just put this together this morning. By popular demand. Sal from Typo Negative, Life of Agony, A Pale Horse Named Death, and King of the Locust. Sal Ambruscato will be on, will be on the show. Uh, listen, Sal, Sal played on Bloody Kisses on the early Typo Negative stuff. He played on uh, the Life of Agony stuff, River Runs Red. Um, I ran into him the other night at the Biohazard Show in Albany, and uh, Sal's coming on the show. So we're looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, congrats on the voiceover gig. Yeah, I, I'm, it was, yes, and Sal was in Toxemia as well. This is true. And I also want to shout out, yes, Jimmy Duke. Absolutely. Don't forget the stress uh, on, that, on that show as well. So I just wanted to, is Chisel in the works? You know, um, I'm, 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 listen, you know what we say here. Eventually, we're going to get everybody on this planet on this fucking show. But I just saw the Chisel play fairly recently. Um, love to have any of them on the show. We'll, we'll, we'll get on that. The show is just so booked out months in advance right now. You know, it, it's just the show's in a good place. People come, you know, a lot of people come to me now and like to be on the show, whereas in the early days, I had to chase people down. So, hey, I want to mention um, the Patreon. Um, the Patreon, please support the show on Patreon. Um, a lot of people have come on board lately. Listen, it doesn't. It's not about yo. Come on board for a hundred dollars. Come on board for two dollars. What's important is that you're part of the community uh, at, at, that that supports the show. I want to shout out my latest patrons, our latest patrons: Kitty, Christopher Park, Michael Boylan, Ty Zembry, Kenny Clark, and Harris F. Carpos. Is that Greek, Harris? But listen. Thank you all for supporting the show. There's also a PayPal address there if, if you want to make a contribution. Um, you could do a super chat function on the show. When we do uh, questions from around the world, it comes through in color. I can't miss it. You go to the front of the line. Please subscribe to the show. If you're watching it in rerun, there's a subscribe button right there. Subscribe to Stone Films NYC YouTube page, please. And uh, that said, you know, just thanks for supporting the show. Uh, the show's in a really, really good place. Four years into it, 300 and something episodes into it. Um, I'm grateful for, for every time we do the show together. Um, hey, Whitney, I was wondering. Now we could start the show. Um, so, so, so there you go. Yes, we'll get Neil Fallon on. And, uh, and thank you. Four years, it just keeps getting better. That said, let's clear the deck. What the heck? And let's bring our guest back on from conservative military image, Adam Boss. Hey, man. Do you, when, here, you're man. Out, when you're out on the road, um, is, is, it, is, it, uh, is it hard to kind of keep up your workout uh, regimen? Like when, when you're sort of thrown into the chaos of, you know, going into far flung lands for the first, you know, how do you sort of keep that balance? Yeah, man. Uh, that's like one thing that's tough about the how we the shows. At first, when we first started, you know, playing shows or weekend runs here, it wasn't a thing. I was like, yeah, whatever, two or three days, sure. Off, sure. you know. Whatever. But then, um, like as it became like two or three times a month, and then you know the Europe run, it started to be like, all right, man, like I got, I can't not like so, I can't <laughs> not do anything. So I got like a membership to like LA Fitness. So there's LA Fitness is like all over the country. So it's like that's my fallback. It's like all right, you know, like I'm going to Texas tomorrow, and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get my workout in, you know, pretty much like right where I land, or that evening, and then move on from there. I try to do like if if I'm going for three or four days, like I try to do at least one like gym workout. Um, other than that, like, yeah, when we were in Europe, it was tough. That's the, that's the longest I had ever gone without working out like, since I was in the Army. Like, I didn't, I didn't work out once. 
not one time, but there really was just no time. I mean, absolutely none. So when it's stuff like that, where it's like, I can't get to the gym, I just do what you can, right? So like, okay, I can't go to the gym, but what I can do is like, oh, well, stop it for lunch. You know, I'm eating right. You know? Yeah. I got well, that's, always a, that's always a big, big challenge on the road, especially, in, especially in Europe is, 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 is eating, is eating right. I know it's gotten easier because I remember going over there in the early nineties where, you know, you go backstage and they would throw a loaf of bread, some cheese and some meat and that, and, and that's it. There's nothing, yeah. you know, you are, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I just make it a conscious thing to be like, all right, I can't control not being able to go to the gym. What else can I control? Yeah. All right. So I can control like, my quality of my rest and sleep um, and my food intake. Now, is it going to be perfect? No, but like yeah. that's, that's when you should be the, the most strict, right? Is when, yeah. you, when you have all those other things that you can't control. That's when it's like, hey, buckle down. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, I just, I'm never not going to go to the gym or like lift weights or care about my you know, health and my appearance. Like I'm just, it's just who I am. I've been doing it for too long. I do. Yeah, yeah. I like lifting weights. Like I like going to the gym to lift weights. That's what I'm into. Not like anything else. I'm not training for a marathon or an obstacle course. I don't do like martial arts stuff. Like I, yep. I just enjoy going to the gym and you're a, gy up you're a gym rat. Yes. I, yes. Straight up. You know. So yeah. I. But one one cool thing though is because we're constantly touring. Like I do get to go to some like really cool gyms like out, you know, out of state. That I'm like, oh man, I've heard about this place for years and years. Oh, and that's finally, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I got to hit some cool spots up like that. But this time in Europe, coming up, I will will be going to the gym. I can't go that far again. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, well, so uh, Whitney uh, is asked where in Texas. Well, here you go. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Let me get that back. Um, they are going to be in Texas playing. You, uh, March 8th in Houston, March 9th in Denton, March 10th in Austin, and March 11th in San Antonio. So the, you, you're heading – as soon as you're done with the show, you're basically heading to Texas, right? Yes, sir. I got I got this evening, and then, yeah, I'm flying out tomorrow morning. That's great. That's, that's I'm excited, great. man. I love Texas, dude. Yeah. God's country. Texas loves you, man. Um, <laughs> you, you know, I want to – where is – okay. Okay. Skipping around, skipping around a little bit. I mean, and, and sort of going, you know. Uh, I want to talk about this release, um, casual violence, and uh, you know, this, 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 it, this is the big one. Uh, it's fantastic through and through. Could you give us some background on like how it came together? You know, why these songs? This is this is uh, this is just. I don't know. It's just great. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, yeah, dude, uh, when it was time to like do a, a new album, I was originally, this was like the beginning of last year. So like early 23, right? We recorded it in January. I was like, I'm just going to, we're just going to do an EP. You know, I was like, just do another EP. And then it was kind of coming up. Like I had so many songs written. And then I guess I talked to a couple of like close friends who kind of were like, hey, you know, consider a full length, consider a full length. And so it went from EP to being like, well, we've got two months time off, no shows or anything. I was like, I guess we'll do a full length. And I'm like, well, for me, a full length is like 10 songs, right? Like I'm like, you know, dude, but it was, it was really, it was very stressful. I'm not going to lie. I had, I put a lot on me for this release um, because I was like, Yo, this is like a big moment for the band, right? Like, big statement. Yeah, like it was our proper studio, you know, like everything else, everything else before casual violence was recorded on my iPad <laughs> with a digital like interface, like a two channel. Is like, that right? Yeah, dude. And the iPad was like maxed out. Like it would cr crash sometime because it was printing so, so much. So like, I would record everything there and then like. Even like even this even even the the young ones the this the track from the young ones split even, this was recorded on your on your on your laptop yeah. Yeah. no shit <laughs> wow so, yeah that's, uh, so I'm telling everybody out there it is possible I would not suggest it it's very very stressful and that, you know luckily we had a, a a really good buddy of mine James who lives in Arizona 
who was who did like all of the mixing and mastering um for for us right um up to this new album coming out he's done everything and he was incredibly helpful um with all with all that stuff and god bless him man the things that i gave him and what he was able to kind of produce with them it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible but so when we went to record casual violence it was like oh man dude recording a full night sucks it's like so much stress it's like you have to do the same thing double the amount of times right like putting out i, I guess songs. you were conditioned you were conditioned sort of to to do what you've been doing which is one two songs put yeah, all yeah. your focus and all your energy into that from you know from start to finish get it out move on to the next thing yeah and you know, i was i was stressing too because like <laughs> the songs were some of the songs were recorded and didn't have any lyrics to oh them. god and I was like, oh, man. And I was like, I got, I got to put something together here. You know what I mean? And it was kind of like, I was like, oh man, you know. And it came down to the last minute, and I think the very last song that I, re I recorded vocals for was uh, "Shirt Tucked Aggression." That was the last mm -hmm. song, and it was like we couldn't, I couldn't have waited any longer. <laughs> I was like putting it off, and then actually, that actually turned out to be like one of my favorite. Yeah. Like, one of my favorite songs on the record, like personally. And I think like just the flow and then the theme of that song itself. I was like, wow, dude, I can't believe I just pulled that out of my ass. Like I recorded the vocals for that at our guitar player Chris's house after we played a show in Boston. So the next night, like I the next day, like did the vocals for that. And, um, and, and everything actually, everything on here it, it are, are new songs. None of these are remakes from one of any of the previous it's all brand new stuff. Yeah. Oh, that was all. Those were all brand new songs. Yeah, no cop outs here, man. None of those like re-recorded <laughs> songs. The song came out like a year ago, man. We don't need to re-record it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I also for me it was like, yeah, dude. Like, ain't nobody trying to hear the same song on twice on a record. Yeah. Uh, plus, right. I had so much stuff to pull from that I was just, right. like, we don't have to. I I really did consider it though. I did consider re-recording like one or two songs, like from the Skinhead demo. Like to put on this, but at the end of the day, it was like, no, 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 with this. Um, and I, this album was awesome because it was like, you know, proper studio, um, and all that, but it was also like I had the artwork like set up in my head and it came together like pretty quickly. And then I'm just really happy with the whole layout. I'm sure you could tell this, like if you own any of our records or have ever seen it, but like, I'm a big fan of like rewarding the owner of the physical copy, right? So it's like, if you own the record, like that's awesome, I wanna reward that person. It's so cool to like have a record and open it up and there's like cool stuff to look at. Well, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Things to see or like read. You know, the the idea is like, when I do the art, I was like, I want really, who, who has the record? It's like, oh, cool, man, you know? And there's like plenty of like hidden things in in the artwork and weird inside jokes and there's like a find and seek on the artwork for casual violence where it's like six soccer balls hiding throughout the artwork can you find them you know um and so it's like all like hand-drawn stuff that i did and some images um from a buddy of mine brett in australia who did the um like one of the pieces of art so yeah it was doing the artwork for this was I'm embarrassed to tell you how many hours I put in. I put into the artwork for this record. Mm -hmm. It was a lot, but um, you know. I, I think I think it goes back to what we were talking about before. Is like one thing that's sort of missing from from the from the uh, from a bit of the, from the community and the culture is, you know. And and I, listen, I'm not trying to be that like you know back in the day that guy because I'm not. Yeah, sure. But but what I remember as a young person. And, and somewhat is you go to the record store, you know, on rec, you know, and you buy the record and you open it up and it's, it opens up and, and you read who produced it. And you look at the, <laughs> the art, the art and the presentation was, was almost, almost as, almost as big as, as, as the music itself. The, it was a big part of it. Who produced it? Who they thank on the record, what the yes. art is, you know, and, and, and that's something that sadly in this age that we live in with all this digital shit, is, is you know most 99 percent of the bands you know uh, have swept that aside so it's really refreshing you know that that you guys come you know come across with with, with that with that with that attitude that you know we we want to reward the people that buy the yeah. physical 
part of yeah. this thing. You know? And that's yes, absolutely. Thank you. It feels it feels good to have somebody acknowledge that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like I it's, enjoy it. Yeah. So I don't want to be like the old crusty guy either. I, digital, like this day, could not be successful as we are without like digital streaming and stuff like that. Like yeah. it's awesome. There's a place for it, sure. and it's, it's a crucial component. Like, I mean, this is how I've discovered most bands in the last 15 years, honestly. Yeah, is is by is by that. Um, but that doesn't mean that like it's the only option, right? Just like people who don't like that physical isn't the only option. They can coexist, right? Like they absolutely can. And that's the idea is to be like, this is the digital world. And I agree with you. I hate summing up like an entire piece of music in a, you know, a little cube like this, like you got to <laughs> nail the cube perfectly if you really want to convey everything. Right. And so the idea is like, when you own the record that maybe it gives you some context or it gives you like like you were saying you can read the credits who produced who recorded it when it was done stuff like that i try to make sure that all that information is always in there and I, when i was a kid like really young you'd read the cd and say, what bands did it then and you'd be like yeah. oh yeah. i'm gonna go check that band out and like yeah, yeah. connect the dots man you're like oh i'm gonna go check that band out and so yeah. Um, I wanted to do something like that for casual balance, but there was just not enough space. So for this new record that we have coming out, I I made this like section and I'm like, here are every band you should listen to. <laughs> so yes. we, it's like all, all any of like our friends' bands, our homies' bands, people who had an impact on, on CMI. And it's like maybe somebody will be flipping through there and pick out a band. Like, I never heard them. I'll check them out. Yeah. Is now I know I want to get to what you what you just mentioned is is but today as fate would have it right you guys digitally uh, drop this banger right there you go. yeah 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 uh, it's like, and I've only listened to, I only listened to it like twenty times before the show um, it's great Hell yeah, made all the numbers up <laughs> yeah it, it's great. Uh, what want to just uh, give us a little background on on this song and and uh, how it came to be? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the first song on the EP that's coming out on Triple B Records. Uh, five songs. Um, yeah, this song is like I had been trying to write the this kind of song for like eight months, man. And I was like, I was, it was just kicking my butt. And then I was like, I, this is like. What, that song in particular is like I'm really, really uh, like proud of, and I don't really say that too often about my stuff. But like, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I nailed it, man. I was like, I, I nailed it. I was like, I knew it's got a chord, it's got a lead, it's got the ash beater ending, it's got like every, everything, everything in there. And it's also too, it's not like a deviation from stuff we've done in the past. This is just the the evolution of the sound. When I was writing these songs, like lyric wise, especially, I was in a mood. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was in a mood. So like, um, the, like all of the songs are kind of, they're a little abrasive, um, uh, but I'm, I'm wicked hyped on them. They're, they're fun. They've got multiple songs that are over two and a half minutes, which is like a big record for us. You, most of the songs are like a minute to two minutes. So most of these songs are like almost full, full length, proper songs. Uh, yeah, multiple. There's and, 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 I, and I love, uh, I love. If you think these songs are about you, they are. I love. Yes. That. <laughs> Thanks, man. And it's true though. It's like uh, if you think it's about you, it is. Yeah, that, that's um, right. And and, and yeah, this EP is called uh, No Squares in Our Circle. Yeah, no no squares in our circle. Yep. Uh, I just I love I love the. Uh, I love like uh, PG rated insults. To me, it's like there's just so many raw words that like when so if somebody calls you a square, to me that's like more insulting than like calling you a motherfucker. You know, it's yeah. like you a square just hits different. You're a square. You're like, I'm not a square. You know, I'm cool, man. It just yeah, hits yeah. like it cuts you a little bit deeper than if you were to just say like you suck. You know, and yeah. so the idea is like, no squares in our circle. Like, hey man, no squares are allowed to hang out in our circle. We only want. We don't want cool people. It's just kind of being funny, but also like being sincere. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's how the, the title for that came up. Kevin Moran um, says, uh, "I got that pre-order," and he asks, "Who did the artwork for the EP?" 
I did I did the artwork for it, yeah. You drew this? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I got this, I'll give a little back story on it. I got this when we were in Europe. Um, I, somehow there was somebody, like I think it was the show in Belgium, and they were just like, had this table set up, and they were just selling all kinds of like random old stuff, fanzines. And I bought this like book of like, a photography book of like, uh, all different kinds of skinheads from all over the world. Huh. Um, and uh, it had this picture in there of like these two girls, like kind of similar in this pose. And uh, something about it, like the way it, the picture like kind of hit me, I was like, dang, dude, I was like, this is really cool. I was like, it's making me feel something. And I'm not sure what. So I just like drew a version of that photo uh, um, of it. It's like a picture from like, I think maybe the mid early nineties or something like that. And I just also love like kind of like that old, like UK 82 style, you yeah. know, like some foreskin stuff was like, I love the kind of crudely drawn picture. That's like, it's not perfect, but you can still tell it's a person, you know? So it's I'm also not really that good at drawing. It takes me a long, long, long time. So, you know, there's some things I can't do very well. Um, but yeah, it was kind of uh, also, I did purposely didn't want to put the band name um, on the record because I think it's kind of a flex to be like, yeah, the band name's not even on the record. It's mm -hmm. just like if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you yeah. you 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 can. Uh, fortunately, you have CMI. You know. Yeah. It's just like we're incendiary device. Nobody's calling the band and nowadays it's ID. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's just, yeah. And, and I like that. I like that. You know. I agree. We. Yeah. I, I, that was kind of part of the reason too when I came up with the band name of Conservative Military Image. I was like, all right, that's a long mouthful. I was like, right, you right, right. EMI rolls off the tongue. It what? feels right. It feels normal. Yeah. So yeah, I was like, yeah. that's how I knew. And so if you talk about CMI, you're talking about Conservative Military Image. Everybody knows. If the band was like TXB, you know, it just it doesn't. No, no one's gonna say that. Right? It's like CMI has right. that like right, cadence. Right, right. And so yeah. that was like that's how I knew. And so. We always make the joke where we're like, the guys in the band are always like, yeah, man, we're ready to sell out and change our band name to CMI. You know, it's just kind of a, a funny joke. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. so let, me, let, me ask, let me ask you, um, I see, so this is coming out on Triple B Records. Is this, is this, is this a first? How did that come to be? And, uh, you know, have you, uh, is, have you parted ways with Lionheart? Oh, no, no, no. We're still working with Lionheart. So, yeah, um, Sam from Triple B reached out to the band and was like, hey, you know, I want to put something out and gave us an offer and, you know, stood, stood over it for a little bit. And then I met him in person in Tampa, Florida in um, in January. And we got to like, him and I got to talk in person. And I was like very, excuse me, I'm very protective about, you know, the product and what sure. it is. And I'm not just going to say yes, to something on digital and we talked in person and it was just like everything he was saying was just like he's like yeah man whatever cool yeah this on that you don't want to do it cool and i was just like he was saying everything and i was like this is great and then he i was like all right like i will do it but like lionheart has to be involved because like you know they've done so much for us and i didn't want to just jump ship you know and so i was like they have to be involved so he's like yeah absolutely man cool like, perfect so they're lionheart's got like a little like special thing with the record that they're going to do, you know, it's like, it comes with some extra stuff and it's got their own print of their record um, with the vinyl. But also it was really, really important for the band to have a piece in the U.S. A lot of people get really like salty because our stuff's like so hard to get or it sells out right yeah. away and yeah, yeah. goes for prices on discounts. And I hate that. Like yeah. it's one thing if it's kind of tough to get, it's like, ah, I can't get it. But if you keep, keep going back and you keep not being able to get it, eventually you're just going to be like, I'm out. This is dumb. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. There was the idea. It's just like, I hate the fact that like people who want the records can't get them, but you don't want to flood the market. So I was like, we have to put out something in the U S that was this, yeah. that was like essentially what sold it for me. And, and, and you're doing it on a great label that that's really at the forefront these days. So, you know, you, it's you, you're, on, you're, on a, you're on a fantastic label. Oh, dude, I'm so disconnected from that, too. I, I had no idea Triple B was, like, as big as it was. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just I just straight up didn't know. 
So when it got announced, everyone's like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And I was like, well, shit, I guess this is like kind of a big deal. <laughs> I guess I did the right thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm excited, man. Like, dude, I'm excited to work with them. And it's been awesome. Sam's been really good for us. And it's a really good opportunity to get, like, you know, exposed to a, a whole other side of the hardcore and punk yeah. scene that, you know, normally probably wouldn't give us the time of day. Yeah, and, and not that not that this is the case here. Because uh, I, I don't believe that it is, but like Triple B, Triple B is a kind of label right now that's so hot that anything they put out, pe someone's going to pick that up. And yeah, and and and, and, and not that you, not that your band needs to rely on, but but it's 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 a nice perk, you know that 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 people are going to come to the party that might not you know normally you might not come on their radar screen. They just know Triple B is is putting out good quality stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. And yeah, it, yep. it, it's it's good stuff. It's the yeah. U.S. version of like Lionheart, right? With the built-in yes, audience. That's right. And there's that's nothing right. there's nothing wrong wrong with that. I don't see that as as a bad thing at all. I mean, I'm pretty brand loyal to a lot of stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, it's like it's like. If my, like homie, a, if my homie was like, "Yo, you got to check this band out." If it's somebody who I'm like, who's never stored, he says it, I'm like, yeah, I'm checking them out. You know what I mean? Right away. No questions asked. I'm like, yeah, give it a, I'm giving them the honest listen there. And it's the same thing with the label, just on a different scale. But it's like, if it comes out, people are at least going to be like, oh, everything they put out, I love. So I'm going for it, you know. It's That's like awesome. uh, Discord Records in the early days was like that. Anything Discord put out, you know, you just automatically pick it up. And, and you know, even Bridge Nine, you know, Bridge Nine Records, you know, we're oh, yeah. records. Our new records, you know, our new record, our, our debut records on Bridge Nine. It's 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 a nice look. We're happy that that uh, you know we uh, have our record out on Bridge Nine. No, oh, yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, Bridge Nine is like legendary for me too. Like when they yeah. like early days too. Like if it was on Bridge Nine, I was like, oh, that's probably my favorite band. You know yeah. what I mean? If it had yeah. the Bridge Nine logo on it, I bought it. <laughs> you, you know, they ain't putting out crap, right? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, someone, yeah, that's right, Sean Brandon. There you go. I'll see, hey, I'll see you at the airport on Saturday morning, Sean. Don't be late. Um, oh, there's like questions like on the side there, huh? Oh, oh you okay. never saw that? What no, I just, I just. Oh, that's where all I, the I, stuff I was in the private, I was in the private yeah. chat and we just saw comments now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna do all that in a, in a second. And uh, yes, Joe Ackerman, Bridge Nine is super legendary. Let's do this. <laughs> let me take. Let me take a quick, quick sponsor break, and we'll come back and we'll take questions from around the world. Okay. Good. All right. There you have it. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Our guest today is Adam Voss from Conservative Military Image. Yo, post your questions. Go deep. Get weird. Get funky. Um, let's let's get let's get into some questions. We are sponsored by blah 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 and the Texas Silver Rush. They're a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians and all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces as well as the style them for stage, album covers, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Riley, Ringo Starr, and, of course, Agnostic Front. Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and, of course, www.texassilverrush.com. Last but not least, 126 Hardcore Clothing is a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They're about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game at www.126clothing.com. Post up your questions. Uh, I want to mention a couple of events. We mentioned that we're going to be out west. Uh, we're heading out west uh, for two shows in Cindiary Device. Uh, on the streets again, that's coming up the 15th and 16th, of course, with CMI the first day. Uh, we're playing the second day. Uh, there is an after show party uh, the second day with the Bell Tones exclusive East Coast show. A couple other bands. Uh, it's it's um, at the Wood Shop in Brooklyn. It is the On the Streets Again 2 after show party after the Saturday night show, uh, March 16th. Hey, I am moderating the Ray Capel from Punk to Bunk, Punk to Monk book event on Sunday, April 7th at Generation Records. Come on down. A uh, bit after that, a week or so, I am up at Bridge Nine Records. I am moderating the Ray Capel from Punk to Monk book event. Come on through. 
Sunday, April 21st at the Barry Electric, all ages free hardcore matinee with Fahrenheit 451, Kings Never Die, Brick by Brick, The Car Bomb Parade, and Faded Line. Uh, art show up at Bridge Nine with Mike Gallo from Agnostic Front, Lori Dawn, Christopher Mickin, uh, Saturday, May 4th, up in Beverly, Mass. And then, of course, our annual Memorial Day weekend show in our beloved Tompkins Square Park, Saturday, May 25th, with Rebelmatic Incendiary Device. It's going to jump off tonight. Non-Residence Cartel and Guitar Me of One. Uh, Rampage Fest 6 with Adrenaline OD. Um, headlining is Sunday, June 2nd. And then back to the New York, our 50th show at the Barry Electric on Sunday, July 21st with Sworn Enemy, Incendiary Device, Cropsy, Redwoods, and Foul Pride. So there you go. Whole bunch of events coming up. Questions for our guests, please post them. Let's clear the deck. Let's bring Adam back. Hey, hey. So Ooh. that said, um, hey, Gary. Hey, Gary, what's happening in Hamburg, Germany? All right. Formerly, formerly of Chromax. Um, let's see. What do you got? Um, all right. Why not? Oh, I, wait. Do I have a picture to go with that? I think I do. Hold on. Where's the Taylor Swift shirt? Here it is. I got it. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, Adam, is there a story behind the Taylor Swift shirt you're wearing? Um, uh, are you a fan or, or how, how does the Taylor Swift thing come into play? The infamous Taylor Swift shirt. I've, Boy, that, that sort of got, I'm sure that caused a ruckus, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, oh, dude, that's, I have never owned a piece of clothing that I've gotten more comments <laughs> or compliments on right. like, ever. I mean, literally any time I've ever worn it. Um, it's just funny story about that, dude. It's like, I think that shirt's like seven, seven years old now. Because like, it used to be white. Now it's like gray and it's got holes in it. But um, it's... It's just, it's awesome. Not only does it fit me perfectly, but um, it's love to her. Like, I don't give a shit. I truly enjoy her, almost her entire catalog. Um, she's an awesome songwriter. Um, you know, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. We talk about that. But for me, it was the like, it's also like a bootleg. It's not an official Taylor Swift shirt. My yeah. buddy Ian, um, who sings for Lost Legion, he actually printed this shirt and sold it at Midwest Live and Loud, which is like a oi like fest that's in Chicago, like every summer. Well, it used to be um, at every summer. And so he was selling them at the fest there and I bought one because I was like, oh man, I have to have this. This is so sick. Uh, it's got, you know, I think it's uh, that girl's name, Babs, I think is her name, the girl that's the picture on the on the shirt. And it's just like, I don't know, it just looks cool as hell. You know what I mean? It's, it's awesome. And it's like funny. It's like bad reputation. And it's like, got this like great photo on there, but he was selling them and I bought one. And, uh, turns out, I think I was the only one who bought one <laughs> that, that whole weekend. Um, and so there's only like five or six, like in circulation, like it's just the small amount of them. And everyone's like, Oh, you have print that man. I'll have a buy one. And I'm like, no, I don't want anyone to have my shirt. But he actually gave me the screens uh for that shirt like uh two months ago so i have the original screens for it so i was thinking about printing some and giving them out to like some of the some of the homies or anything like that but, so that um, so i knew i wore that shirt especially on stage that people would be so upset for whatever reason so i was like of course i'm gonna do it then this <laughs> is so, so, like uh Bernard, you know, bernardo you know, asks uh, bernardo asks adam is your footwear for stage exclusively Adidas Originals? Other than the Sambas, any other ones you like? Oh, man. I could talk about shoes all day. <laughs> Is that I right? I do, I do. I do like talking about shoes. Uh, yeah, I pretty much, I've pretty I've never played a show not in Sambas, and I never will. Like, I, I, I always will. Like, I have boots, but, like, I, how I move and do things on stage, like, I just can't wear boots live. So you yeah. will never – not see me in a pair of some very what what sh what shoe size are you i'm a size 12 man size 12. yeah just trying to get that looking for that adidas sponsorship if any of the reps out there i've got like i think maybe like over 20 pairs of they're all the same shoe basically they're like very hold on i gotta i gotta look in the closet a second hold on <laughs> 
Oh man, you're gonna bust out some shoes for me. Okay, let me see. Would you wear a 12 and a half? Is that too big? No, I wear 12 and a half too. All right, listen. These were these yeah, were given wear. to me as these were given to me as a gift. And they're too big, they're too big on me. And I'm gonna gift them to you. These are these are superstar 50, right? These are these are very <laughs> rare superstar 50 run D, run DMC. Oh uh, damn, okay. Uh, Adidas. Yeah. Oh, those are fire, dude. Yeah. Oh wow. I'm coming for, I'm coming, bro. And, and come to the show. Oh, that's awesome. bring, yo, get these the fuck out of my closet, please. Um, so, I will. Yo, I will happily do that. If it's if you, it's a white shoe, so I'm already all in on it. It's a white shoe. It's got this little red on the back, though. Love it. We love a good piece of flair on there. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm just, you know, it's like twelve just, and a you half. Know, you know, that my foot works in that. I'll make it work. That's very, very kind you know of what? you, man. I'll trade. I'll, I'll trade to it to you for like a, a CMI T-shirt. You know, or something. Yeah, like you, that. Have, you have a lot, man. Whatever you want, I call that a fair trade. <laughs> call it a fair yeah. trade. Maybe we'll get set, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm um, a samba guy. So I got. I just love white shoes, and I was on this find a lane. Yeah, you know, just that's what I. I'm, ex I'm excited. They have a home. They've been in my closet for like a couple years now. You know. Oh, um, this I'm is a good happy. one, and, and I have, I have a visual for it. Here we go. Uh, Jonathan asks, "What's the story behind the Oliver?" Khan's song. Boom. Uh, Oliver Khan is the greatest goalkeeper to ever play the game. He is a an electric and polarizing figure. There is, if you even watch soccer, even in a little bit, a little bit of regard, you'll see that like there's, he's just a different kind of player. The dude was an absolute maniac. I mean, the way he played, the intensity he played with, like that kind of personality is like missing in modern soccer. Uh, so he's just, he's just an absolute animal. Just, I don't know. He's a good, he's a good kind of uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know the right way to say it, but he represents CMI like on a different, you know what I mean? He's like, he's like the, the CMI version of the soccer world where he just was his own dude. And I mean, he is awesome. He's, he's an ugly guy, but damn, he knows how to play. There, there you go. Uh, Robert Hogg in Scotland says, Hi, Adam. Followed you guys since the first seven inch. Wasn't sure if you would make it to Scotland, but we are coming out to the black and blue. So happy you are playing. Let's go. Hell yeah, dude. Love to see the Scots, man. I love Scotland so much. Yeah, I know we're not we're not being playing Scotland um on this tour, but we're going back in you know, October or November, and we're only doing UK. So we got like Two shows in Ireland. We got like two shows in Scotland. We got like five shows in England. So if you are in Ireland, Scotland, or England or Wales, you we will we are playing multiple shows. But I love Scotland. I really want to go there. So thanks for coming all the way up Bernard, to the greatest Bernardo, country in the world. A Bernardo Bernardo basically is calling Oliver Kahn a psychopath and uh, a story of Lou. Uh, in a story, Queen says, uh, I guess he played for Bayern Munich and the German national team. Is that right? Yeah, he played for Bayern main, most of his career. Yeah, he's mainly known as, as the Bayern goalkeeper, and he was the German national goalkeeper. So he was, yeah, he played in the World Cup game against the U.S. It was Germany versus the U.S. So, like, the samples from the song at the beginning are, like, right. taken from, from that game where – the U.S. actually scored a goal, but it did not get called because there was no, you know, VAR review at the time. So the ball did cross the line. So technically the U.S. should have won that game, but Germany did, which I don't mind. I love Germany. I used to live in Germany. Um, so uh, how, how, does, how is it, uh, uh, not that I say that it's rare, but, but you have a, a real love for, for European football. Uh, where did that come from? I mean, I grew up playing soccer like, that's like the only sport I ever like really took seriously. Like, you know, playing baseball as a kid and soccer and soccer, as I got older, I still played, 
and then you know then i got like really into punk and i was like oh sports are dumb and i stopped playing and then right kind of like you know one of my i have very few regrets in my life but one of them was like when i stopped playing soccer but so then like you know in my early 20s i kind of got back into it and then i started like playing like rec leagues and stuff and then like when i was in the army i used to play like in like a league that we have like for the military so yep. we got to like we represented our base so when i was living in germany they, like, right. drove us out to this military base and like every military from all over europe had like a soccer team and we mm. did this like world cup thing and of course we got our fucking asses whooped because oh. it was three guys who knew how to play on our team and then a couple other guys who were just didn't have to go to work you know like, a, oh, a, cool. couple, a couple ringers a couple like guys yeah, yeah, exactly. the street, a couple yeah. guys we picked up on the street corner right yeah. and we were playing with guys who had been like kicking a ball since they were a fetus yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it's like, assassins. it was fun straight, up, last, straight up but, assassins right <laughs> yeah. but i I, love, I just love it so much man because it's like it's a truly a global sport right the entire world plays the game so it's really cool in that regard and then also like i mean it doesn't cost a lot of money take a ball like you don't have to own any equipment yeah. and it's like it's just two halves right 45 and 45 done so there's no commercial bullshit there's no nothing right it's just, sure. the gameplay goes on i just love it so much i don't care i do people love to give me shit about like especially all the euros oh it is football not soccer and it's like look it's football to you and that's fine we call it soccer where i'm from brother yeah. And if you can't, if, if that makes you upset, then why get hung up on that? You know? Yeah. So I just lean into it now and I'm like, yeah, we call it soccer. Doesn't that make you so angry? But uh, I mean, I'm not like a, I mean, I watch, I watch all kinds of games. I just, I just love the sport. I just like talking about it. You know, it's fun to watch. I decided World Cup, Euros, Champions Euros, League. Euros this Euros summer, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Hope to catch yeah. a couple games. So, this is a good one, actually, and I have I have a visual for this. Here we go. Which is which is uh, which is perp walk. Uh, Dan Dan nee says great record covers. There is something timeless about them, and remind me of early hardcore records. How did you develop your design sense? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Um. So I try to do things where it's like every cover is kind of its own stand standalone thing. Like I'm almost like, you know, I just didn't want to just keep doing the same variant, like name, whatever. Um, I think record covers are like, that's how you used to find out about music, you know, like by the cover of the record, like you couldn't listen. You would just look at the cover and you'd be like, damn, that cover goes hard. I guess I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna buy it, you know what I mean? And so, you know, because you don't necessarily have to have a record cover anymore, um, you can see that I've noticed like the quality or even the amount of time that goes into the record cover is, it's, oh uh, yeah, yeah, okay, here's like a live photo, there's a logo, whatever, boom. You know what I mean? Um, it, to me, it's like, it's just such a really unique opportunity to, you know, have something capture the sound or whatever. And I, I, I really love like collage stuff. I've always been really drawn to that. So like, you know, the old scene punk aesthetics of just, you would cut out pictures that looked cool and then you would put them all together and you would copy it. Uh, it's like anybody can do that. And so the idea is, you know, there's a deeper conversation about this, but it's like co-opting other people's art to put it together, it's stolen essentially, and then screen it. Right. And then it becomes its own art. You know what I mean? Like I didn't yeah. take any of those. Photos. I think four of those photos are Derek Rigger's photos, you know, and then the other one was like a library photo from an old Chicago neighborhood book that I got at the library and, you know, I just put it all together. Oh, there's, this, there's this one that I, that I absolutely love. Uh, let's see, there you go. Love that one. Oh, yeah. This is like uh, my, probably one of my, my crowning achievements. I've had that, <laughs> I've had that yeah. photo, like I've had that photo saved for ever, man. Like since well before I was ever, even remotely considered doing the band. I'm just like a massive, like Amy Winehouse fan. I think she's yeah. just awesome yeah. and really enjoy like everything about her. Um, and you know, I, that picture is something about it. It's just so, so cool. Like you see it and I don't know, man, it's just a, such a unique photo. 
Um, and I think she is also a good representation of like, she was like the jazz, like, you know, jazz stuff. She was like for real. Like she could talk with all these legendary people. She knew her shit, you know? Um, and to me, she was like, that's the kind of person who like never found punk, but they're like the punk version in their world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. in an alternate universe, Amy Winehouse could have went down this lane and would have been like, you know, some cool like, girl. Like Miles, our- like Miles Davis was, was fucking punk as fuck. You know, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Miles like, Davis, and you know, so, and, and like, like yeah, yeah. Jazz was the original punk, you know. Before punk, it was jazz. That was that was the anti-establishment music, you know. That was yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the degenerates. Like that's where they went. You know what I mean? So I think she was a good representation of like, hey, like you can be, you know, you can have this punk ethos and not even be affiliated with right the punk. On. And you know, funny story is that photo is actually taken by. That '80s singer songwriter Brian Adams. Do you know that? Who? Brian Adams. He had like a bunch of hits in the '80s. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking. He's the, one, he's the one who took that fo- photo. So I guess he's like his part-time thing is like he takes pictures of celebrities. Brian Adams, who had all those hits in the '80s, like it was the summer of '69. Yeah. That dude. Yeah. yeah, that's him. He's the one who took the photo. That's I tried to buy the. Movie. I tried to buy the rights to the photo because I was like, oh, well, I'm going to try to use it legally. <laughs> it, was like, wow. it was like, it was like 10 grand. I was like, well, look, guess we're not doing that. Oh, cuts like a knife, right. No, no, no. Cuts <laughs> like a knife. <laughs> Brian, yeah, yeah, Brian Adams. Yeah, he was Canadian. Yeah, Canadian. That's right. Yeah, he was so. Canadian. That's right. He was like the, the pride of Canada. Here's, you know, we, we, we talked about this very early on, but let's touch it again because it was like right out of the gate. Um, and, and and like a whole bunch of uh, new people have uh, have stepped in. Uh, this Are you still in touch in contact with your military brothers? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as met, as I would like to be better contact with some of them, um, but military is weird, man, because it's like you're really really close with like strangers who be you know and you spend every day all day endless endlessly together and then you know your time is up and one person gets stationed somewhere else or somebody gets out and it's like yeah everybody just evaporates and so they go back to their old ways of life some people are active on social media most most dudes in the, who were in the military aren't really active on social media so right. um i still keep in contact with like my like close homies for sure um, anybody any any of your any of your guys like um ever show up at your show and just like 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 anybody who any any of your guys that show up at your show and of course this was totally foreign to them and like see what you're doing and are like wow well yeah, who, yeah for who, sure who because who, that, that's happened to me like people from yeah. other walks of life and they're like yeah. who knew yeah yeah oh absolutely man like there's, uh, there's a way way more guys who i was like in the military with who know about this band than I, I thought, you know what I mean? Ah. Like I, I have gotten rid of messages and I was like, Oh my God, it, it lost. I saw your band or whatever. What? And they're like completely not affiliated with this world. Uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. A couple of them have come out to shows too, you know? So a couple of dudes I stay in touch with, will, you know, or will either come to the show or, or are coming to some of our future shows. So it's really cool for that too, because it's like, oh man, I get to see some of the other boys too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do one. Let's do one or two more. We'll wrap it up. Uh, Ackerman, uh, favorite soccer team USA and abroad. Also, anything other than white sambas. Well, let's do one at um, a time. F- favorite favorite soccer team USA and abroad. So I guess favorite like U.S. soccer team. Is, I watch it less because it's all I got. So. Um, I like the idea of up and coming league. So I watch MLS games from Chicago, even though we have by far one of the worst MLS franchises, the Chicago Fire. That's still my team. So I support them, try to go to as many games as I can. Um, yeah. So, like, I think the Chicago Fire, for being the third largest city in America, has the, the lowest attendance per game than any other team in the MLS. Like wow. year in year out, like it's paltry. Uh, for but yeah, Chicago Fire, yes, abroad. Uh, I mean, like I'm a Tottenham supporter from Premier League, uh, so I, I would that's kind of my team. 
However, I, I just truly love well, the sport itself. So I watch almost every Premier League game every weekend. Just, you know, I'm more partial to players than I am to teams. I have like other teams that I have soft spots for. Um, but yeah, like, and then, you know, I guess I love the Japanese league. So I love like how the Japanese play soccer. And then, you know, I watch some of the Bundesliga. But I guess, you know, if it came down to Tottenham's like the team, I own jerseys from that team. So got it. there you go. Piece of machine. Oh, and there's no other shoes. Also, there's no other shoes. It's just white. That's nope. it. There is That's nothing it. else. There's uh, no other shoes. Pizza Machine asks, favorite Morrissey song album? Dude, my favorite favorite Morrissey song is um, First of the Gang to Die off mm. of You Have a Court. That is uh, my favorite Morrissey song. Um, his solo stuff's much better than the Smith stuff, I would say. Yeah, I Even the stuff in know it is really good. But like um, Last of the International Playboys, I think it's Playboys, that song's a banger. Number Spawn a Monster. Also a banger. Um, yeah, those those are like the first ones that come to mind, like those ones. I guess favorite album? Ooh, again, I don't know if there's an album that I would be like 100% behind. I mean, maybe Viva Hate, but that's like the first one. So yeah. I saw but, him on that tour. I saw him. First of the game to die. First of the game to die. Have you seen him play live? Uh, yeah, I've seen him twice, three times. I saw him in 2004 on the You Are the Quarry tour. And I saw him in 2006 in Chicago at like this really awesome opera theater. Um, and then I saw him at Riot Fest two years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I saw, I saw him on that Viva, Viva Hate tour here in New York. Yeah. No shit, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it was, it, and, and, yeah. It was, it, 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 uh, it matters. It wasn't in the big room at Madison Square Garden. It was in a place called the Felt Forum that was like, the small Whoa. room in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, it was it, it was interesting, and uh, Man, that's cool. yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, let's see. How about let's see. Well, what else we got? What what is uh, people asking about the new record? Uh, were you into? Uh, were you into any of the New York, New Jersey, New York oi bands from years past? I mean, honestly, like geographic wise, I probably couldn't pinpoint any specifics. I mean, yeah. I mean, I did, I did like like the Ducky Boys, and uh, but I think that's Boston, though. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I know I do, but I couldn't tell you specifically geography wise. Oh yeah, this band from New York. You know yeah, what I, mean? gotcha. I know that's probably a less than exciting answer, but it's the truth. Okay, here's here's a good one, kind of last one. Has the name of your band ever got you guys banned from playing a club? Have any bands refused to play with you because of the name? No. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I would say band, but like on the Europe tour, we had like a couple of shows that got canceled and had to get like rebooked, you know? Um, and like, it was before we were there, but like, you know, uh, these people who are thinking that they're like protesting you know the enemy, and it's so funny how it's like, wow! It's like you are, you are literally, you're eating your young. You are, you're so, your your energy is so misplaced. It's, it's offensive. It shows how much you really don't know. You know what I mean? So yeah, that that happened, and then refused to play with us. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't actually outright come and say it. And you know, we've had bands that have dropped off because they're like, oh well, it's not you, it's the promoter or something. I was like, yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah, all right. Um, Again, like we talked about, the name has brought back lots of, well, lots of like you know issues on me, but or on me and the band itself. But ultimately, it's like, hey, you know what? This, I mean, maybe this isn't this isn't for you, and that's okay. Like, yeah, you know, what I mean? I, I'm not losing sleep, so you can you can come over here on the winning team. There's plenty of room. We love we love having people on the winning team. You can come over here, but. Ain't wasting any time. We we you know feeling poop about any doesn't want to. Do. It's like you know you do a little bit of research and you can find out. Because if you're gonna not like the band because you're like oh, you guys just suck, then I'm like all right respect. But if you're not gonna like the band for a, literally a, just some made up stories that you read on the internet, it's like to me it's yeah. just like well, unfortunately you there's, there's a lot. Well, of that. 
there's a lot of that in the world right now, isn't there? Just a lot of this yeah. kind of stupid, like, sort of like pathetic. I even want, I didn't want to, I don't even want to say mob mentality because I feel like that's almost giving it more than it's worth. You know, it's like yeah, a yeah. Stupid, stupidity mob mentality of like, yeah. you even know what you're talking about? What you're protesting? Yeah, like exactly, man. It's just really painful to see because it's like somebody who's like, it's like, I'm not mad that you are trying to dislike this band or protest this band or cancel this band. What I'm mad about is the fact that you're wrong. Like, you're incorrect. Yeah. Like, you, right. you know what I mean? Like, I don't, that's what I'm just like. If you even just kind of like half assed internet research for like a one minute, you, you would have been, you'd have been, you would have known what you were saying. Like, oh, you guys just suck. I'm like, I respect. But, you know, it's, we call it, you know, savior syndrome. Everybody wants to be the most righteous and the most, the most correct. I saw them. I got them first. First, I saw them. And first, I tried to cancel them or whatever. Yeah. Let's go figure. Um, so there you go. Conservative military image released today. Guilty until com compliant. Uh, listen to it. it. It just turned up on, on, on streaming uh, today. Uh, the track is fantastic. Uh, the pre-sale, I'm going through the gamut here, Adam. The pre the, the pre-sale is is up now through Triple B Records. Uh, the record's no squares in our circle. Um, pre-sale is up along with some great looking merch. Uh, so that said, also a bunch of dates coming up, including uh, a pretty extensive European run. There you go on that. Uh, doing some work there in Europe. And I just want to also mention the fact that CF, they are also playing. There you go. Conservative Military Image also playing March 15th, the On the Streets Again 2 uh, here in New York City. So a lot, go, lot going on, man. Any, anybody you want to thank as we head towards the door? Anybody you want to thank? Anybody you want to shout out? Yeah, dude, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, Drew. I really, really appreciate this medium. I think it's really important. Uh, it's cool to have guys like you who've been doing it for so long still actively doing it, man. You know, Thanks. and not the guy who was like, yeah, yeah, back then, back then. You know, it's like you still have so much to give, and it's really cool. And maybe, you know, uh, you, you found the lane. So I just want to say I really appreciate it. It's an absolute Thanks. honor to be here talking with you, man. It's really thank cool. Thank you very so, much. And, and, and I make this fun. fun. I you do make it this I love it. Thank you. Exactly. You can't fake that. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, like uh, you, you can't fake it. Um, so I see it. I love it. Your passion is appreciated across the world. Thank you. And 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 I respect and I appreciate your band. It's a breath of fresh air, and I'm so happy for the success that you're having and and the continued success that you will have. And and I will see you what in in a week, basically, like basically sure. a week. I'll fucking see you, you know, crushing Brooklyn. I'll see, I'll see you then. Yes. Yeah, bring them shoes, and I'll let you get the lot on the merch. Yo, but yeah, yo, I, yo, I, I got you, bro. <laughs> I'm stuff. so happy that they're gonna find a home. Seriously, you know, I'm so because because they just I I put them on once, like they don't fit me, and they've been sitting in the closet for probably two or three years. I'm so happy they they they're gonna have a home. You know, no, no way Adidas left behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam. I'll see you later, man. All right, take it easy, brother. I appreciate everybody tuning in. All right, take care. All right, I'll show. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Great show, great guest. Um, we had a couple laughs. Uh, it was fantastic. And he got a pair of shoes out of it. They're just a little too – how about that? Adam, Adam from Conservative Military Image is, go, is going to be rocking the Jam Master J fucking Adidas. Hooking, hooking, hooking this dude up. So what do you need? What size are you? You know, thank you, Pizza Machine. It was, it was a great show. I knew, I knew it was going to be, I was, I was really excited about today's show because I fucking love this band. And uh, listen, a lot of people, a lot of people come on the show and, you know, this and that, but this band really speaks to me personally. Hey, Mick, you tell me you made it through this whole thing, Mick. That's incredible. Thank you, Larry. Yes. Good guy. One of us. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Stu. And Ackerman, we're going to see you up here in a couple of days, right? We'll see you up there at, at, at this at, at this event. You know, I got a fuck. I got a hustle out. We're flying out. We're playing Saturday and Sunday. 
I got to do this voiceover thing on Monday. I'm going to go to the Rainbow on Tuesday. I'm flying back Wednesday. And then Thursday is this. And then we're playing Friday this. So, so there you go. Yeah, the guests got paid, right? Come on my show. And, you know, anyone who comes on the show gets a free pair of, of Adidas. So, so there you go. Hey, Stephen Oswald, drummer for the High and the Mighty. We grew up together in the Bronx. What's happening, buddy? Um, thank you, Chan. It was a good one. We do good ones. It's what we do. We've been doing some, some great shows lately. <clears throat> Next show is a week and a half. It's Paris Mayhew. Hopefully, I'll see you out west. If not, we'll see you, you know, a couple of days when we get back when we're playing here. If not, I'll see you uh, on, uh, on the show a week and a half from now. So thanks a lot, everybody. Can't thank you enough for the support. Until next time, do good things and good things will come to you.